Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time once again in the week. The time for the Realistic Racing League for XRL to get underway once more. My name is St. Larry 13 here, and once again, I'll be bringing you the live broadcast of the full 100% length race. For those of you who are not extremely familiar with this series, the setup is very simple. 100% realistic length races with all the cars set to their actual real-life performance attributes. The slowest drivers in XRL are put in the fastest cars, your Mercedes, your Red Bulls. While the fastest drivers are put in the slowest cars, your Williams and your Haases, and then the medium guys end up in medium cars. So basically, the better you perform as a driver, the worse your car is going to be. It's made for some very interesting events thus far, and we're into the fourth event of the XRRL season in what's supposed to be a 17-race season. Right now, we're looking at a field of about 18 drivers who will be coming to qualify, and there is anticipated that... Uh, Two more drivers will show up in the middle of qualifying or at least attempt to start the race. Representing each team, in the Mercedes team, it's XRL Seal and XRL Herbie. In the Scuderia Ferrari team, it's Ryan Hurricane and XRL Ledger. In the Austin Martin Red Bull Racing team, it's Kinsey Retro and Level 6 Beastium. In the McLaren team, it's Boothie and XRL Low. In the Renault team, it's Danny JJ02 and Man... Mr. Anderson, 1872. Mr. Anderson, your name gave me much trouble there. In the Scuderia AlphaTauri Honda team, it's Hazel and Jabez John. For the Haas team, it's Mad Gansafi 188 and Pinkuo. In the Willems team, it's XRL Ultimate and MCR Path. Right now, Zola is the only representing driver for the Racing Point team and the Alfa Romeo team. Ollie is the only driver representing them. Again, they are anticipating at least two more drivers to show up. Young Maneuver, if he shows up, will be representing the Racing Point team. And then we'll be anticipating one of the other XRL drivers. I believe it is Wax, who would team up with Ollie if he shows up in time for this. Today, we're going to be going to Bahrain, the full layout loadout of Bahrain. It hosts of a lot of interesting races. Not the greatest circuit ever, but it's definitely had some interesting history in the past. Real quickly, before we get too far underway with the broadcast itself, I would like to go ahead and start up a, de start up a look at how the points settings are going to be looking like thus far today. Also of note, uh, before we get too far into that as well, I do want to bring a note out to anyone who may be watching. Well, no one's watching right now. But uh, to anyone who might end up watching this on playback later on, we all want to go ahead and mourn and have a little bit of respect for the legendary commentator Murray Walker. He passed away earlier today at the age of 97. A very full and storied life within the world of motorsports. And it's a tragedy to see him move on, but... Time will eventually come to get everyone, and it is his time to move. It was his time to move on. However, the mark that he left on Formula One and Motorsport Broadcast as a whole has been very, very huge, very dynamic, excitable commentator. Someone who many people would still bring some personal inspiration from, get some personal inspiration from. So later today, we'll probably try and hold some sort of moment of silence for him, hopefully in the minutes in between qualifying and the race itself. Meanwhile, I do want to go ahead and look at the standings before we get too far underway here. We're relatively early on to the season, so there is room for things to change still. XRL Ollie and XRL Ledger still have zero points each. Level 6 Beast Ian is 14th on the point sheet. He has one point, while his teammate Kinsey Retro has four points. XRL Herbie has four points. MCR Path in the Williams has 13. XRL Steel in the Mercedes has 17. Young Maneuver has 18. He was a lot higher in the point standings, but he missed the last race, and that's plummeted him downward. Hazel has 21 points in the Alpha Tari. XRL Low in the McLaren has 27 points. Pinquo is 6 on the point sheet. He has 36 points in the Haas. XRL Ultimate has 38 points in the Williams. XRL Wax in the Alpha Romeo has 39 points. Third in points is Danny JJ A02. He has 41 points in the Renault. Ryan Hurricane, the 45, is making a good representation out of the Ferrari. He has 45 points. And right now, XRL Zola is starting to open up a little bit of a lead. He has 59 points in the pink tracing point, 14 ahead of the rest of the field right now and actually it looks like one of our other drivers has joined and that is XRL Wax who has joined and will team up with Ollie like I anticipated that he would in the Alfa Romeo machine still have no word to see if your maneuver is going to show up quite yet though when it comes to the 
manufacturers or team or constructors championship, however you want to call it. Scuderia AlphaTauri is struggling, as is the Mercedes factory team. They both have 21 points each. Alfa Romeo only has 22 points, and the racing point team only has 41 points, but they're in the locked in a three-way tie with Renault and Austin Martin. Both of those, uh, not Austin Martin, uh, Red Bull. The Renault and the Red Bull team also only have 41 points each. The Gav is only three away from them getting to the fourth in the manufacturer's tie title right now. McLaren has 44 points. Third is Haas with 51 points, who was just one off of Williams, who has 52. And right now, the Scuderia Ferrari team is opened up a small lead in the Manufacturers Championship. They have 73 points, a point lead of roughly 21. But, of course, that could very quickly change. All it would take is a really, really bad day from the Ferraris today. Does not appear that Young Maneuver has shown up yet, so don't know if he's going to end up missing the race or what, but ideally at least we should be able to utilize this to get the event going nice and well. One second. Just going to cross post this for more promotional reasons. Right now, it's looking like it's a dark circuit, but obviously it's in the night. But there does not appear to be any threat of rain at the moment, as we'll have 19 drivers taking to the track very shortly here. Alright, and there we are. The first cars are coming out onto the circuit now. Let me go ahead and get everything set up. Sorry, just trying to run around and make sure some last things are taken care of right now. The very first driver who came out onto the track representing the Williams team is XRL Ultimate as he is already going down through Sector 2. This is a very, very bumpy and abrasive circuit all the way throughout. And the second sector has a lot of downhill followed by some slight uphill sections. This could be a very, very interesting event. Also, Excuse me, I almost choked on my own air there. Also, this track has three different DRS detection zones, and the second DRS detection zone, actually all three of the DRS detection zones, are all a decent ways away from each other, between the detection zone itself and the start of the zone. So we could see some situations where drivers will get DRS, but the driver they are following is already too far gone. It's gonna make for some very, very interesting events here. One of the other drivers who got out on track early on is this new driver into the realistic racing League events. Mad Gansif 1A. I'm not, I'm just gonna call him Mad. Mad G. We'll call him Mad G because I am not even gonna pretend to know how to say his name as it looks like that car gets a little bit of hyper over rotation coming out of that final corner. But he is now on the start of his first flying lap. As of now, all but five drivers are out on the racetrack either starting a lap or saying for a warm up lap. This is not the largest track ever. There's a lot of places on this track where you can end up catching someone else. And it looks like one of the uh, Alfa Romeos pulled over and slowed down just a bit there on that one non-DRS straight. But anyways, here are the two Mercedes XRO Steel and XRO Ultimate. The two of them, not Ultimate, uh, XRO Herbie and XRO Steel. The two of them will more likely be utilizing DRS to try and maximize their ability in qualifying here. One of the interesting things, we'll look at Steel very nearly cuts off his teammate, and now he goes around! And damages his wing off the inside wall, and his teammate did a good job. Congratulations to Herbie staying out of the back of him and avoiding taking damage as well. However, that's going to compromise both of those drivers' first lap attempts, and Steel still has yet to get going. He is trying to, but there's not a whole lot of 
free space on that track and he needs to get going in a way that's not going to end up inhibiting the rest of the drivers. So right off the bat, significant implications for the Mercedes team. It's going to be a long way back for XRL Steel and with a very, very damaged wean on top of that. Meanwhile, this is Boothy who's invalidated his current lap. This is level 6 Beastian. He is at 28.539 at the end of sector 1 and is now on the run downhill through that second sector. Mad Game Gene has set this fastest lap thus far in the first lap with a 127.857. Ultimate immediately tops that with a 127.573. Here comes BCN around one of the tightest hairpins on the circuit. Now puts the power down and opens up the DRS on that straight that's in sector two. And then comes around a very, very slightly banked corner, nice and rounded. And then it's all uphill for a little bit. A series of corners that very, very much complement the aerodynamics of a Formula 1 car. 107.771 at the end of Sector 2, and now it's just two straights and one oddish corner as he now runs down that straight that doesn't have a DRS detection zone. Past, the, past that final corner. Good job avoid the over-rotation. Opens up the DRS, and at the line, Beastia goes up to 5th with a 130.079. Right now, the spread... 127 to 135, however, Herbie came to a complete stop, pretty much, to avoid his teammates, so the actual spread is closer to 127 to 131.714. Ryan Hurricane in the Ferrari has just set the fastest lap time right now with a 127.495, and now Ollie is right now at 8th. Meanwhile, this is elsewhere on the circuit. This is Boothy here, who's trying to make something happen. This is the teammate of the driver, who's at the top of the time. She says his ledger as he's going through. And meanwhile, on the back half of the circuit, we're going to be quiet for a lap and just ride on board with Extra Ozola and hear what a lap on board the tracing point is like here at Bahrain. And that's the lap on board with Zola as the fastest lap of the session thus far, the 127.148. So congratulations on his part. 12 of our 19 drivers have set a lap time right now. Steel, Low, and Pinko are all trying to get another set of laps going. Well, a first set, a first good set for all of them. Steel was attempting earlier, but ended up spinning out early on in the event. This is Pinko as he's making the run through Sector 2 right now. Farther up in the field, Danny JJ 2 is a 28.080 at the end of Sector 1. And you can see his teammate, Mr. Anderson, with the numbers 1872. Farther up there, Danny will overtake Mr. Anderson. Now, I'll be very interested to see if there's any strategy there. It appears that Mr. Anderson is having a very, very slow lap. He is just about out of fuel. Now, thankfully, he's off the main racing line just enough that will enable other drivers to get by without too much of an issue as Danny is now on the way uphill, x Sector 2, 105.663 at the end of Sector 2. He will attempt to be the 14th driver to set a lap time here at Bahrain. Nice long straightaway, now dives through that final corner. The final corner is almost done in two distinct parts, one 90-degree corner and then a very, very, very slight bend or kink 
the end of it. 127.173, so Danny now has the second fastest lap time. Wax is in the middle of an outlap right now. He is basically quote unquote invalidated, but now begins his first flying lap. This is where it all comes down to. And Zola has retired from the session in pit lane. He feels that there's no need to continue pushing right now. Low, meanwhile, has just exited the DRS deployment zone in sector two and now begins the run uphill. Again, of our 19 drivers, 14 of them have set times thus far. And we have roughly nine minutes and 15 seconds left in session. Wax, Kinsey Retro, Steel Low, and Pink Roll all have yet to set lap time. Kinsey is still in pit lane and has not left pit lane yet to attempt to set a lap, it appears. This is Steel. Steel, who spun out earlier and took some significant damage in the front wheel, is finally going to set a lap time. And with the DRS open, it's a respectable time and comparable to his teammates. A 127.351. And right now, that would be good enough to get him in for the next round. Right now, level 6 Beastie is the only driver who has set a time that's still on the outside looking in. He needs to get out there and see if he can find a way to improve. This is Wax, who is currently going through Sector 2 right now. But his fuel is extremely low right now, so I don't know if he's going to be able to actually... Well, it just says he went purple that time, so he might want to go for it. He's going to be very, very abusive on the ERS usage here on this straight to try and get every little bit out of the car. With 8 minutes and 20 seconds left, yes, you could jump in, refuel, and try again, but I think he's going to try and make this lap be it. Coming to the line... It's not going to be a great time, 128.859. In fact, it's not even close to a great time. That's still leaving him on the outside looking in. Kinsey Retro has finally gotten out into the circuit, your main broadcaster for the X1 League that takes place on Sundays. And he is now beginning his lap, cuts the corner there at the hairpin in Sector 2. You can't be doing that when it comes to the main laps themselves. But right now is Davis John, who is on the bubble. He's in pit lane. Wax has basically no serious fuel left in that car, so we don't aren't going to see him putting a faster lap this time. It's gonna be a little bit, bit a little bit of time until we see drivers try and knock Javis Keon out of the way. Kinsey Retro is gonna be the interesting one to watch because he's the only one outside the top 15 right now, and he might be able to set a lap time good enough in a minute or so here that will get him into Q2. His teammate level 6 BCN is the slowest of everyone who has posted time thus far, 130.079. Also of note, uh, our top only one driver who's having the session, Zola, he set a flyer lap earlier on in the tracing point and immediately brought it into the pit lane and retired. No need to continue pushing excessively hard right now. Save tires, save fuel, avoid the risk of having an incident like what the Mercedes had happened at the very start of the session. Here comes Kinsey Retro now on the run downhill through Sector 2. I absolutely love Sector 2 at this track here. It's very, very tight, but there's enough complexity and enough depth to it that you have good uphill and downhill sections, parts that complement the suspension elements of the car, parts that complement the aerodynamic elements of the car, and you have a nice, respectable straight that does a great job complementing the engines on these cars. I'm not going to say the Sector 2 at Balrain is the greatest in F1, no, not, nothing like that. But I'm going to say that I think it's very, very nice, and I do think that as enjoyable and weird as the short circuit layout of Bahrain was in both 2014, I believe they ran a short layout, and then also again in 2020, I personally would prefer the full layout of Bob Ransom because Sector 2, in my opinion, is actually that good. Coming down through the last corner now, what will Kinsey Retro's first lap time be? He's going to set with a little bit less than six minutes on the clock, and the true rush to get to the next session is on. Pinquo is now the driver on the bubble, and Steele's retired from the session. Of note, there are only three drivers out on track right now. Mr. Anderson is being one of them in the Renault. And Ultimate's retired from the session. He's ninth on the timesheets. That's a little bit tighter than I'd feel comfortable with. Please stand by.
I do apologize for that. I'm trying to get myself something to drink so that way I'm not feeling like completely parched near the end of today's event. Being as these are basically three hour events, you have to take in consideration the qualifying itself is nearly an hour. And then the race itself will go anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours. And then the bits in between those, and then afterwards, it can add up to a three hour affair. Talking pretty much the entire time can uh, get kind of aggressive. Mr. Anderson, his time making it into Q2 is not looking that great right now because he has invalidated his current lap, and it's unlikely he's going to have enough fuel to go for another attempt. Now, he was up by two third, I mean, 23 hundredths at the end of that lap. However, that alone would not have even been enough to get him into the top 15. Pinquo and BC has retired from the session. He feels that there's no point he is giving up on the attempt to make it into Q2. Right now, Wax is still in the pit lane, but Pinquo and Jabez John are both out there. Jabez John is on the outside looking in, and Pinko is right there on the bubble. Kenzie Retro is now retired from the session. He feels there is no need to continue pushing right now. In fact, everyone in the top 10 has either retired or is sitting idly in pit lane. Hazel, Buki, and Lowe, and Ollie are all in a position where right now they're locked in, but if the drivers lower down start finding some massive time really quickly, things could open up and become very, very interesting with only three minutes left in the session. Boothie and Lowe are both in the middle of lap times right now. Neither of them are close enough to really help give each other any DRS draft down the straightaways as Boothie at the end is up by 49 thousandths of a lap of a second. And coming at the end of Sector 1, his teammate Lowe is up by significantly more than that. Pinquo is now beginning his flying lap right now. Going down the main straightaway and dives into Turn 1. It's a very, very difficult Turn 1. One second, please. And now running on the uphill. The RS is still open. He cuts it in. Be very careful of the track limits, Pinko. This is not the time to be having that overseer or those or those track limit violations. Coming down, this is a very, very this part of the circuit that really loads the suspension and puts a lot of strain on it. A very short uphill straight across the DRS detection zone and around that hairpin. And then he pops open the DR the rear wing and goes flying down that back straightaway here. Meanwhile, Davis Dunn, who's a little bit farther back, is trying to make something happen. And Lowe has just set a time of 127.614. It's good enough to bump him up to 10th. That will be interesting to see indeed. Wax is in the middle of trying to set a new lap time right now as well. He is up by 15 hundredths at the end of the first sector. And James John was up by 17 hundredths at the end of his sector. Pinko is going to be an interesting one to watch, though, because he needs to see if he can get himself farther up on the time sheets. That's exactly what he's going to do up to seventh right now. All right. And here we are. This is Davis Khan. And will he improve? He's at 128.033, so he's still on the bubble right now. Wax is the next driver we need to watch. He's got DRS help in the Alfa Romeo teammate of his ahead of him. He is up by three quarters of a second at the end of the straight. Now, here's the thing. If he closes in too quickly on his teammate, coming to this final corner will actually harm his aerodynamic ability to navigate this corner to the maximum. But it doesn't seem like they're going to worry about it. He's staying right behind his teammate. He's going to utilize the draft to try and improve by every bit possible. This also means that Oliver will begin his lap. Wax is now 13th on the time sheets. 127.805. Ollie is now having his attempt to go for it. Boothy is now the driver who is on the bubble, and he is down by 4.6 seconds at the end of that lap. Actually, down by 6.7 seconds to the end of that lap. James John is once again on the outside. He needs to figure out something to make it happen. He's got the DRS open going down the back straightaway, but the big problem for him is that he is very, very low on fuel right now. Mr. Anderson is in pit lane, and as time's up in session one, Mr. Anderson is causing the Renault team much trouble by not getting himself into the next round. Boothy, the driver who is on the bubble is trying to see if he can make something happen, but he is down still by three entire seconds at the end of the sector. 
here comes Jameis John as he rounds the final corner. He has no fuel in that car. He is going significantly slower. He is going to be on the outside. He will not make it in. So now the question is, what can Ollie do? He is up by five hundredths at the end of sector one. At the end of sector two, he is up by even more than that, sixteen hundredths. But I don't think that enough in itself is going to be enough to get him over Jameis John and Boothie as he's coming down the last bits right now. Across the line, Ollie will he improve? He does, he does it just by the skin of his teeth. He will knock out Boothie, and that means both Alpha and Males will make it into the next session. Boothie is going to get knocked out because he is already 7.3 seconds down this lap alone. So that means Boothie will not advance to the next round. Neither will James John, neither will Mr. Anderson, neither will Level 6 Beastian. So a very, very rough time for Renault Power Plants as of the four Renault powered cars in the field, only two of them will make it into the now. Oh, we didn't see it happen, but Hazel went ahead and set the best time of the session 126.935. Oh, congratulations. I wasn't even paying attention to him. I was looking down at the bottom end of the field, but good job on Hazel sinking away with a top time looking to get some redemption out of the circumstances that unfolded last week at Azerbaijan. Oh, don't hit him! do that's no bueno. And Ollie, the AI that took over all these cards, up right, right into the back of Hazel. Hazel just cannot seem to avoid bullcrap happening. Well, there's your lineup there. And the drivers who will not make it into the next round, BC in the Red Bull, Anderson in the Renault, Davis down the Alphatari, and Boothy in the McLaren. Both of the Alphas make it in. Both of the Williams make it in. One McLaren makes it in. One Renault makes it in. One Alphatari makes it in. One Red Bull makes it in. But the Alphatari that makes it in, Hazel, is the one who is right at the top. So we know that those Alphatari cars are absolutely capable. But there's a difference between capability of the car and the ability of the driver, and more importantly sometimes, the situation on the track to be practical enough for them to go ahead and get a good time in. So now here we are, getting to load up in session two, and this is where everything starts getting very interesting here because now we start seeing the tire compound choices going into the main event itself. Excuse me. Stand by for just a second. Anyways, the first two drivers who are out onto the circuit, it's Kinsey Retro and XRL Herbie right now. Because they're at the end of Sector 1, well at least Kinsey is. Now the two Haas of Mad G and Pinkwo are beginning their times. Now, the interesting thing is Mad G and Pinko are close enough that if they so wanted to, one of them could attempt to give a DRS draft to the other one. We now see what looks to be one of the Alphas, Alpha Males, that is, coming out onto the circuit. That is XRL Ollie, one of the last drivers to make the cut into this session. He is now on the run uphill. First DRS stretch has a very, very slight uphill gradient. Pretty much, you could argue that the, that turn four, I guess you could call it turn four, or the turn that's basically at the end of that first DRS straight is the highest point on the racetrack. Although, to be fair, the, I don't know the exact uh, height and depth ratings of everywhere on this circuit, but I believe the highest point on this track, at least, is at the end of that first DRS straight. Right now, it's very interesting because of 15 drivers 
We are looking at a scenario where the field is pretty evenly split. Actually, the split is slightly more in favor of soft. So eight drivers currently have soft equipped. Seven of them currently have medium tires equipped in the event. And we've said before, I'll say it again. The main thing, it didn't work out in Azerbaijan because of all the accidents that happened on track. But the main thing that we've seen in the last events in this series is that having only one stop in the race can be a defining feature because you cut off so much time by not... Oh! What happened there? Well, Mad G had a, uh, a little excitement there at the end of the braking zone, went extremely wide at the end of the front straightaway. He's back on track right now, and oddly enough, the game seems to think that the lap he's on, despite running way out circuit, they, they think that's still a legal lap. It's a slow lap to start with, but it is legal. Oh, wow, that's not expected. So, uh, Ollie has gone around on the exit of turn three. Actually, it looked more like the car may have twitched down on him going to turn two and ended up spinning it backwards. He's one of the drivers running the medium tire compounds. The medium tires last longer, but they have significantly less grip. Kinsey Retro, fastest lap time thus far with a 128.4 on the softs. And the preference is now swapped just slightly over to the mediums as we now have eight drivers on the mediums. Now a driver with the fastest time now, 128.167, that's Herbie on the medium tire compound. It's a very interesting situation right there. We're gonna see Pinkwell come across the line right now. He's going up for second fastest, 128.341. But again, he's running soft tires. Low is now beginning. Here comes Mad G. And uh, like we said, anticipated with that huge runoff, it's going to be a slow lap. 138.837. There's obviously a lot of improvement that you can find there. Here's an interesting scenario. Both of the Williams cars have come out at roughly the same point on the racetrack now. And more and more drivers are favoring mediums as the session is going on. That's a rarity. You normally see a lot more favoritism for the mediums at the start, and then it transfers into softs later on. But right now, a lot of drivers are choosing to run the medium tire compounds as one of the Mercedes have just gone off wide there. Trying to see who that is. And that was Steel. And Steel is still trying to get onto the track in a safe way. But another driver blows past the braking zone. And that's the second time we've seen Mercedes have an issue there in that versatile sector of the track. Now, unlike with Mad G, this is going to invalidate Steele's lap, but right now I'm not worry too much about that. Now, with the way that Steele and Herbie are both at the top of the timesheets right now, the Mercedes drivers, despite supposedly being the slowest ones in them, it looks like they definitely have some practicality. And Steele has the fastest lap time, 128.106. This is XRL low now as he's going down into that last corner here. The fuel light is flashing. He doesn't care too much. There's still nine and a half minutes left, so he can burn out, run out of fuel, coaster around the track, and still have a tip for one more lap. His first flying lap on the mediums will be a 129.178. Immediately, Mad G is going to get into the top five. He sets a 128.628. So while a lot more drivers prefer medium tires right now, it does appear that the softs are absolutely capable and competitive in qualifying, as they should be, as what they're supposed to be. Yeah, CR Path is now beginning his run. Ryan Hurricane is beginning his flying lap here in the Ferrari. This is XRL Ultimate. He's coming to the end of Sector 1 right now, 28.495, as he's going through these aggressive downhill corners, very, very taxing on both putting the car in the right point and making sure that your suspension setup is properly configured here. Suspension is very, very important in the first third of Sector 2. Then after you run around this hairpin, it comes down to an engine showcase. How good is your engine and how little drag do you have in your car as you run down this little straight? And then afterwards, you have a 90 degree quarter through a somewhat that's somewhat banked, and then a series of sweeping uphill quarters that tests the aerodynamic capabilities of the car. Ultimate right now has a car set up to where it's at 106.628. At the end of sector two now, runs wide and invalidates his lap. That's no bueno. He might want to consider bringing it into pit lane right now. 
Meanwhile, Ryan Hurricane, the Ferrari, is on the way uphill. And at the end of Sector 2, 106.545, so a little bit faster than what Ultimate was laying down. And he doesn't go nearly as wide as he's on the run down this straightaway. The only series straight that you do not have a DRS zone on. Path to the top, 127.722. So Mercedes Power Plants have the top three spots right now. But at the end, 128.358, that's for Ryan Hurricane. So Ultimate might have been able to set a time comparative in the top four if you can just keep it clean. Ledger has yet to set a lap time, as does Hazel, who has now begun his fly lap. He was at the top of the time chase at the end of Q1. Let's see what he can do here at the end of Q2, and he's sideways, and he saved it! He saved it! That car was three ways gone from Sunday, and he was able to keep that thing together and keeps it going as he's at the top of the track now and begins the long run through the downhill sections here. 29.2 at the end of Sector 1. It's not going to be a very good lap from Hazel, but the fact that he did not total the car is going to be great in and of itself right now. Also, right now, Danny is on the outside, Wax is on the outside, and Lowe is on the bubble. Those are the three drivers we need to look for that may get booted out as Hazel, Ledger, and Ultimate end up all setting laps. Hazel's on that DRS straight there in Sector 2, and Ledger is on his outlap as he's trying to exit Sector 1. Ultimate is on another flying lap, 106.405 at the end of Sector 2. Will his fuel hold up for him? He's coming to the line. The DRS pops open, and at the line, Ultimate, it's good enough for fourth. So Mercedes Power Plants now have four, all four of the top spots well on the timesheets right now. Ledger in the Ferrari is trying to make something happen. Here comes Hazel out of the final corner. It's not going to be a great time, but it may give us a good idea as to what to look for from the Alpha Tori. It's 11. That's not going to be good enough, but there's a lot of time that he can take off if he can just keep the car nice and steady going through the first three quarters. Danny has improved up to 10th, 128.708. And he's going on another around for another lap right now. However, the fuel light is flashing. That's not going to spell good for him. He's already 3.3 seconds down. So this is not a flying lap. This is a cool down lap. But he has a Haas behind him. And that's Mad G, who's trying to figure out a way to get by cleanly. I think he doesn't have to worry too much because Danny will pull off. And Mad G will go ahead and swoop by now. Ollie's still in the pits, but Lowe is beginning his outlap right now as he runs through that first DRS zone, or the second DRS zone, depending on if you count the start-finish one to be the first or the last. It, it can get very confusing, to say the least. Oh, and Ultimate seems to be a little bit slow there. He does not have a lot of fuel, so he's going to have to make sure he's out of the way of these drivers coming out, because not only is Mad G coming up, Danny is coming up, Zola is coming up, I believe that's Hazel. Yeah, that's Hazel right in front of him who's coming up as well, as is one of the Mercedes. Here comes Mad G, and here comes Zola, both of them looking to set new lap times here. And I think that's Steel even farther back there. Yes, that is Steel. Hazel's coming in as his ultimate. Hazel doesn't have a lot of time to be making the mistakes. He needs to get out there and set a better lap time, too. We know he has the ability. It won't be hard for him to overtake Danny, but he needs to get that thing going fast. Steel is trying to just turn the wick up and scare everybody. Ledger, 106.369, but invalidates it coming out of that second last corner, and I don't think he's going to have enough fuel to go again, so he'll have no choice. He'll have to pit order to keep things going so for the ferrari power plants ryan hurricane is the o and pink are the only ones who are having a good run of it right now ledger is going to come into the pits and we'll have to try refuel up and go for another flying lap wax is one of the drivers who needs to improve significantly he is 14th on the timesheets right now hazel is still in the pit lane ollie is still in the pit lane Danny is still in the pit lane, but he may feel safe unless Lowe can pull a lot of time out. Lowe, is he up? He is up by 42 hundredths at the end of Sector 1. So Lowe is positioning himself to potentially knock Danny out of the top 10. Only the top 10 drivers at the end of this session will advance into Q3. Oh, what's that there? Is that Kinsey? That's Kinsey! 
and Kinsey has had an accident. He just put down the fastest slap time and now has an accident there at the top of the hill. Significant wing damage, but his 127.235. Now Zola is at the top, 127.218. So now Danny is on the bubble. Ryan Hurricane is on the outside looking in. Low is still trying to sell lap time. He's up by a full second at the end of sector two. So Low is looking to shoot up significantly in the order right now. And Leather is back in pit lane. Wax is going to begin a flying lap shortly here. Low at the line. He improves by a significant amount. The McLaren goes up to fourth, 127.759. That's the highest of the Renault power plants. And now there are the two Ferraris out there behind. That's going to be Ollie and Ledger there. Sorry, I mean Ryan Hurricane and Ledger. That's going to get interesting. Something else that might get interesting. Herbie retired from the session a little bit early as his teammate there is going to go a little wide. That's Seal. But these two Ferraris are right on top of each other. They could make something happen with the DRS if they play their cards right and take a good amount, of, a good chunk of time off. Wax is up by about two thirds of a second at the end of sector one alone. He needs already going through sector two. If the Alpha is set up very well, we're going to see some massive improvements. Also, no, we only have four drivers now. We're on medium tire compounds. When it comes to the best lap times, though, that right now, the softs have a very, very clear and distinct advantage. This is going to get very interesting, very fast, folks. Right now, Wax coming uphill at the end of Sector 2. How much is he up? 1.2 seconds. Keep it clean through this corner, Wax. And that's exactly what he's going to do. There's only one more corner and one DRS straight left. And then we'll see if Wax will be able to improve into the next session. Zola is retired out from Q2 right now. Meanwhile, a little bit farther back, Hazel is on another flying lap there's one minute left in the session time is running out and running out fast pinko was on the bubble right hurricane and danny have been knocked out right now pinko saying a flying lap here comes ryan hurricane he's going to utilize the drs to give his teammate ledger a bit of a hand down that main straightaway both these drivers are going to be pushing and pushing like hell to try and get into Q3 here. Hazel is trying to make something happen all on his own, as is Danny. He was up by 2.6 seconds at the end of the lap, but he needs to improve by more and keep it clean. This is going to be his last chance, his last shot at getting into Q3 right now. Pinkwo is still right there on the bubble as he's going through Sector 2 right now. And if enough people make it, Herbie might get knocked out of Q3. If enough people improve by a significant amount. Right now, the gap between 9th and 10th is a mere. Time's up in the session. The gap between 9th and 10th is roughly 7 tenths. And Wax just had a collision with Ledger. And Ledger has been knocked off the circuit from accident involved with Wax. And that is not going to spell well for either of those drivers. Ryan Hurricane now has to go and improve on his own. He's up by two tenths, but Ledger is not going to get a chance to improve. Hazel to the top. Last moment, 126.804. Extending job by him. Here comes Pinkwo. He's on the outside right now because Ultimate has jumped him. What can Pinkwo do? And at the line, does he improve? Yes, he does. That's good enough for second best. Here comes Ryan hurricane the drs is gonna pop up and on the street and at the line will he improve he does improve danny is gonna be the next one herbie has been locked knocked out by virtue of retiring from the session too early ultimate is knocked out as well here comes danny what can danny do as he's coming to the line now he, does, he improves but not nearly enough to go farther up now ollie is gonna have his shot he comes through that final corner now ledger is gonna be absolutely at the Alpha Rebel team, but will Ollie make it into the session at the last moment? The time says no. He improves to 11th, but not enough to get into the next session, but his teammate Wax will be able to advance. And what was initially looking like a Mercedes dominant event in Q2 turned into a massive, massive run as we have a Honda at the top, followed by the Ferrari power of Pinkwell in second. The tracing point has the Mercedes power in third, and then we have the Honda power again in fourth. The highest, though, and the only Renault power plant to make it in the next round is going to be low. Also, Steele is in a very unique position. He was the only driver who's going to make it into Q3 running the medium tire compounds. 
Also, Wax has a five-spot grid penalty for the start of the event. That's going to hurt him significantly. Ledger never got to set a single lap after collisions and gets invalid lap times. Danny in the Renault is going to go ahead and get knocked out. Ultimate in the Williams gets knocked out. Herbie in the Mercedes get knocked out, despite both of them being in the top four earlier in the session. Ollie in the Alpha is going to get knocked out. Wax is in, but like I said, he has a five-second grid penalty for contact between himself and Ledger. Steele has, is going to make it in the Mercedes. Low in the McLaren makes it in. Mad G in the Haas makes it in. Ryan Hurricane in the Ferrari makes it in. Path in the Williams makes it in. Kinsey in the Red Bull makes it in. Zola in the Racing Point makes it in. Pinko in the Haas makes it in. And Hazel in the AlphaTauri is going to make it into Q3. And now I need to take a breath because my mouth and throat are killing me right now. I've been doing nothing but non-stop talking for like the last four minutes because that was a very, very interesting qualifying session too. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm sorry about that, people. We're seeing drivers coming down the line here. Zola trying to be one of the first drivers out, but the actual first driver who will come out into the track is going to be Renault Power, the only Renault powered car right now in the session who's made it into Q3. That is XRL Low. Behind him, you got Zola and Kinsey Retro. Kinsey trying desperately to turn around. He was in contention for possibly a win. Last week at Azerbaijan, but just was not able to keep the car off the wall and ended up plummeting through the field before having to retire from excessive damage and it being a, ha a potential hazard to other drivers on the track. Kinsey's hoping that here today he'll be able to start turning that around. Pat G, we now see him on the way out of pit lane and his teammate Pinko is right there behind him. The two hosses will come out at similar times. Path and Wax have yet to come out onto the racetrack here. Right now it's Lowe who's on the run down through the interior. Okay, that's an interesting decision by Mad Team. People that went ahead and swapped places in turn one, but I guess they're trying to give themselves a little bit of room. Now that there's only 10 cars on track, there's also going to be more than enough room that hopefully we won't see issues like what we saw happen between the Ferrari and the Alpha Romeo happen at the end of Q2 happen now. Again, there's a lot of track in the sense of length. It's not that dissimilar to a normal Formula 1 circuit when it comes to length. However, the big thing is that you cross the lines around here, cross over a lot, and you get to a lap at a relatively quick pace here, so you are going to naturally run to other drivers at a pretty respectable rate right here. Meanwhile, low gain his first flyer lap in that McLaren at the end of that first sector, sector well, almost at the end, he's coming down to the end now, and he will have a time of 28 at the end of it there. It's going to be very interesting watching Maggi and Pinkwo's time because they're going to be utilizing DRS on each other to try and improve. Haases are pretty much the only team who's in a position where, because both of them are in, both of them will be able to do it. Lowe has no teammates. Hurricane has no teammates. In fact, no one else has any teammates here. Hurricane and Wax both have Ferrari power, but there's very much two different teams. So Maggi and Pinkwo might be in an interesting position here if they can make the DRS zones work out properly on the straights. And also of note, Path and Wax still have yet to leave pit lane. And as I say that, Wax is now on his way out. But Lowe is going to set the initial bar, even if it's only for a few seconds, time 128.558, Kinsey 128.718. Zola to the top, 127.276. <laughs> 
excuse me, I'm sorry about that, and Steel with 127.565. So those are your first four times. Here comes Hazel now. He's on the run down into the final corner. Hazel, top of the timesheets at the end of both of the first two rounds of qualifying. 27.481, the second best thus far. And now here comes the Ferrari of Ryan Hurricane. He pops open the DRS, and at the line, it will be a time of 127.080. That's by far the best we've had this far. It's actually saying 079 on the timesheets right now. So anyways, here comes Madgy and Pinkwell. So that's interesting. The two Haases ended up with a lot of gap between them as that lap went on. So they're not going to have any DRS or draft ability off of each other. Madgy with a 127.825 at the end of his lap. Pinkwell significantly slower. So much slower, in fact, that he's going to abandon the lap altogether. So right now, only seven drivers have set lap times. Wax will be the next driver to set his first flying lap. Kenzie Retro, though, is in a position that he might be able to improve. He's on the same set of tires, so there's going to be a bit of wear. However, he's going to have a little bit less fuel as well. No cars are on track around him, and Kenzie's going to try and improve. Right now, he's the slowest of all the drivers who have set a time. And he's coming into the pits. Despite the fact that he has the fuel, he's coming into the pits. What about Zola? Same thing, he's coming into the pits. What about Wax? Well, he's starting his lap. Low, we know he's coming in. He's significantly down on time. Same thing with Hazel. Neither of them are really pushing. Steel has a very, very slow lap time. He's honestly not even trying to do anything right now. Just trying to make it around the circuit here. Ryan Hurricane. It does not look like he's going to be able to go for it. He's very abusive with the ERS usage right now. And the fuel light is flashing. But he's way off time, so it's not going to happen here. Enkuo is still in the pits. Pat has yet to make an attempt to leave pit lane. Wax is the only driver right now who is in the middle of a truly active lap. The only other driver on track, Pinkwo, is going to be bringing it into the pits, we imagine. This is the only driver on track to watch at the moment. Lights flashing on that machine. We will still probably see him set a lap here. Five minutes and 15 seconds on the clock, and Wax will be the eighth driver set time. It's good enough for six on the time sheets 128.208. Path and Pinkwell still have yet to come out of pit lane. In fact, there's no action on pit lane right now. The only driver of note on track is Wax. I am seeing movement in the Mercedes pit, though, and I think we might see Steel coming down Whoa. shortly. In fact, that's exactly what we see happening right now. So Steel is going to be the first in this next round of drivers coming out onto the, pat on tr onto the track. Path still has yet to set a lap time, and Pinkwo has yet to set a time also. He's just coasting around the circuit right now. It's not likely he's going to get another chance to set another lap. There is no other movement on pit road, though. A very strange situ situation, Q3. I'm quite literally seeing nobody doing anything here on pit lane. At all. There's no one. No movement, no nothing. Time is running up fast. And if we don't see drivers coming out onto the track by the time we get to about three minutes on the clock, they're, oh, we're, we're, oh, here we are. People are coming out now. That's low. And Kinsey Retro are now on their way out onto the track. The thing is, though, if everyone starts running onto the track in the same part, I think Path is finally on the way out. If everyone's trying to run onto the track at the same time, we're going to run into the situation where there's going to be a lot of blocked track. It's going to be a lot harder for the drivers to actually set a time. Low, yep, that's Path there. Path is finally trying to make something happen in the Williams. 
waiting a significantly long amount of time before doing anything. But he's doing it. Zola is now on his way out onto the track. Steele's going for another lap. Steele has time to go for multiple laps. So that's going to put him in a very, very interesting scenario. His tires are going to be more worn at the end of the session. However, the counterpoint to that is that he's going to be in that rhythm, in that perfect zone, and that may be enough to get him some good times. Right now, he's fourth on the sheets at the moment. Kenzie Retro is saying to himself, oh, oh, there we are. That's Ryan Hurricane who's now coming out. Pinquo has yet to come out of the pits. And with only 2 minutes and 33 seconds left, it's going to be iffy to see what people are going to be able to do or not. Still no movement from that hot, the main Haas driver of Pinquo. I say that, I see it. Yep, here he is. Pinquo finally coming out. So all 10 drivers are going to be out onto the racetrack. Kids, Steele is still out there trying to set laps. Going with the heavy fuel tank, slightly more worn tires approach. And just get into a rhythm around here. As he's on the way uphill, at the end of sector two, he is up. He's up by 24 hundredths. So there's still time for him, at least, to take off if he can maintain that. Going through this last corner coming up, excuse me, coming up here. That's good enough for third now. So Steele is up to 127.459. Path is now beginning his flying lap. It's taken a long time. We waited for a while for it, but it's finally here. Kinsey Retro, DRS is open there on that straight. Mad G is out on the lap as is Pinquo. In fact, if Mad G ends up slowing up just a little bit, he might be able to time it with Pinkwell just right for the two of them to get DRS draft off of each other. Kenzie up by 1.29 seconds at the end of the lap, so there's a lot of time that he's going to take off here. It's coming down to it now. Two hosses have each other's DRS going down. The main straight, Kenzie, second, 127.186. Great run by him. What about Lowe? He is up by eight tenths at the end of sector two. He's up by a full second. That brings him up to fifth. And if he, the fuels holds out, he could go for another lap potentially. Path invalidated his first lap. He's gonna have to try again. This is the only chance left because there's only eight, 17 seconds left now. Steel is not gonna get another lap of this. Hazel is up, but not by a lot. It's only by 23 hundredths at the end of Sector 2. He needs to find a lot if he wants to try and take the spot at the top. He was at the top of the timesheets in 1 and 2. Zola to the top. 126.974. Also, the clock is up. Time's up. Over. Plow. Hazel to the top. He did it in the last corner. 126.935. Can anyone else compete? Steel is significantly slow. Path has yet to actually set a time. Wax has spun himself out there. He was up by over a quarter of a second, but has now gone around. That's not going to sound good. And now there goes Kenzie Retro. He's going to spin out. Mad Key is going to come down, but he is way down. When it comes to time, Pinkwo is going to try and make something happen. What about Ryan Hurricane? He is going to jump into the pits. He can't improve. Pinkwo is around the final corner. The DRS is open. The DRS is being used liberally at the line. It's good enough for fourth. His teammate, Matt Key, is going to bring it into the pits. He can't do anything. Wax is coming down, but he is way down on time right now. That's not looking good for him. Low is down on time as well. Path is still the one driver who might be able to improve still. It's not looking like it's going to happen. The time that he has up right now is extremely, extremely low. So Path is not going to have a good run. It looks like it's only going to be a ninth place starting position. I say ninth because we know he's going to start there. Wax has a five grid penalty. And that means Hazel takes the time at the end of Q1. Takes the time at the very end of Q2. And is going to take the pull here today. He is looking for the redemption arc after what happened to Azerbaijan.
So outright outstanding job there by Hazel in the Alpha Tari. Two poles in a row. Path, 10th fastest time in the Williams. Wax, 9th fastest in the Alpha. Mad G, 8th fastest in the Haas. Low, 7th fastest in the McLaren. Steel, 6th fastest in the Mercedes. Kinsey, 5th fastest in the Red Bull. Pinquo, 4th fastest in the Haas. Ryan Hurricane, 3rd fastest in the Ferrari. Zola, 2nd fastest in the Racing Point. And Hazel, in the end, had the fastest time in the Alpha Tari. We're saying bye for the race itself. It does not appear that Young Maneuver is going to join us here. Also, we are going to go ahead and hold a moment of silence once again for the passing of Murray Walker. For those of you who are not familiar, Murray Walker was pretty much the voice of Formula One throughout most of the 80s, 90s, and a good chunk of the 2000s as well. So we are going to be looking at a rough time going forward. Although he's not been broadcasting for a while, still having his expertise and his experience there to fall back on has always been nice. Uh, many people who do broadcasting commentary will always look forward to him as a source of inspiration. He was an absolutely excellent hype man, very, very good at keeping the focus on the racetrack whenever a talk kind of ventured out. A very professional commentator at a time where commentating for races weren't, wasn't usually seen as being too professional. At least when he started, and he definitely had a hand in helping to revolutionize that. We'll be very interested to see what else comes going forward when it comes to other dry, other people who will try and broadcast and fill those shoes that he's left behind. They've been trying to fill that for a while, but it's not going to happen. Anyways, I'm going to go quiet on my end because I'm tripping over my words more than properly honoring him.
Currently standing by until we get the race underway itself. Qualifying has ended. Hazel put on a very, very interesting show throughout all three sections of qualifying. Never had the fastest time until the very end of Q1, Q2, and Q3, but always took it to the very end. And quite literally, at the end of qualifying three, it did. he was up on his final time in the Delta, but it didn't look like Hazel was going to be up enough to take it. And he sent it like a mad lad through the last corner, pulled out the time necessary, and stole the pole away from Zola. So... Hazel and Zola will be leading the field at the start. Wax is going to be penalized way down the order after contact that he made with one of the Ferraris at the very end of Q2. We're looking at a 19-driver field as Young Maneuver, again, for some reason, seems to have not shown up for this event. Drivers are now beginning to get ready and will be underway very shortly on the track here. As lights out the way we go here, and Hazel immediately opens up a nice little run. On the rest of the field, the field is all over the place right now as they're diving down into the very first corner right up with Mr. Anderson and a complete cluster of a traffic jam going through there. It looks like everyone's going to get through without too much of an issue, and I say that, and already there are drivers who have gone out. That's Pass and Low, who are both off the circuit right now back there, and a lot of bollards knocked over. There's a yellow flag at the end of Sector 1, but at the front, Hazel and Zola have taken point, and Kizzy Retro is there in fourth position. Ryan Hurricane is there in fifth. Maggie has opened up a little bit of a gap. Wow, look at Herbie nearly spins that Mercedes out, trying to hustle it downhill on those cold, medium tires right now. Ultimate and the ledger of note, they, along with Beastie, and they all elect to start with their entire compounds here. Trying to already set up for a single stop strategy as the area are down that short back straight. with that dive on his teammate Wax there, so move all in now up in the 12th position. I don't think Wax gave that to him, it definitely looked like that was a path of pass of merit. Herbie has overtaken ultimate on the straight, and we'll probably see Herbie try to see what he can do to the top. Herbie is the highest driver right now of everyone. Oh, well, now here comes ultimate back. So Herbie sacrificed his line to that final corner, so now ultimate is going to get back in front of the Mercedes there. We're going to be neck and neck as it comes to the line. And at the end of the corner, oh, that Mercedes really having a little bit of trouble keeping the car from stepping out, going through there. Going uphill. Herbie and Ultimate still neck and neck. But it looks like Herbie, for the moment, is going to take that position. Path and Wax are both pitting, as is Mr. Anderson. All the golden instance there in the first sector. Low has dropped off the back of the field significantly, as has Beastian. But Low does not appear to have any damage to that car. He is going to more likely charge his way back up to the field. Jameis Kahn back there is watching the fight between a Alfa Romeo and a Ferrari right now. Boothy is the one in between those those scenarios. Way up in the field here. This is Ultimate and Hurricane. And now Ultimate is trying to hold off Hurricane. He's on those hard tires trying to play a long game. But he also needs to fight really hard to preserve every spot on track that he can right now. Because he's got a Ferrari on soft right behind him. He steps really wide. That's going to be perfect for Hurricane to snuck around through. Ultimate's fighting back on the outside though. But I do have to wonder with how far that car ran off circuit. If he's going to get called out for potential track violation warnings. It's a little bit farther up. Hazel, fastest time, 132.867. Zola is right there in the draft of Kinsey Retro. Trying to make something happen. He'll he go for the dive at the end of the straight. 
He's going for a dive on the end of the straight on the outside. He wants Kinsey to go wide. So Zola has a little bit of a straighter line going to turn two here. That's exactly what happened. You can see that Red Bull is twitching a little bit coming out of turn three. So now Zola's going to come on the inside, neck and neck down to turn four. Zola has the point. He cuts off the apex from Kinsey, but Kinsey just takes a later apex. So now they're side by side once more as they go down, exiting sector one. Kinsey is out front, but Zola's trying to fight back. The Red Bull has a little bit of trouble keeping that car properly on the racetrack. Herbie is the first driver with a time penalty for track violations. Zola is still there behind Kinsey, and as these two fight, Hazel continues to open up a gap over the rest of the field. Wax and Anderson are in a little five of their own now, going down this straightaway. DRS is enabled at this point in the race, with Mr. Anderson having it over Wax, and he will maintain that. He's a little bit farther back. Ultimate is lost now a position to Ryan Hurricane and has to keep Danny behind him. Oh, and that's Mankey! And Mankey has spun around there, putting the power down a little bit too aggressively. Oh, and who's that right ahead? That's Ollie! And Ollie has had a massive exit. Both of those Ferrari-powered cars have had instances where they put the power down a little too aggressively, coming uphill, going through Sector 2, and the cars went around. Mankey will probably be able to continue. I didn't see any serious damage, but for Ollie, the car is in a very, very bad state when it comes to the front wing. I don't see any damage to Mankey's car, and he is staying out, so he will try and make something happen here. Meanwhile, look at this little train of cars. That's a perfect DRS train as it comes down the straightaway. Low has Davis killing his draft. And there's Boosie, and now Boosie is going around. And he's still on the racetrack. Davis Kahn, the teammate for Hazel, he's currently on the outside of the points main positions, wanting to find a way in. He needs to figure out a way to get up there to Ledger, who's currently 10th on the timesheets right now. But the advantage right now is that Ledger has the hard tire compounds. The track will come to him eventually, but for now, the mediums of Davis Kahn will make him significantly faster. Zola and Kinsey continue their fighting now down that second straightaway. Zola utilized the DRS to get by Kinsey that time. What will Kinsey's response be as they come onto the main straight? Or not even the main straight, if there's a little instant by Zola here in this corner, Kinsey might try it on this straight. Not likely. So it looks like Kinsey's best chance is to try and maximize his room to the last corner and utilize DRS to get that position back at the end of the front straight. And as these two fight, Hazel has now opened up to a 4.3 second gap. 132.495 is the fastest lap time thus far. That's from Hazel, but Zola has opened up a significant gap on Kinsey. So Kinsey, although he has DRS, is not going to be able to fight back, at least not yet. Now Kinsey, if he gets a good run through these first three quarters, might be able to make it happen going down the second straightaway. He's got DRS again. The, the gap is at about five tenths and is not closing nearly fast enough for him to have a serious attempt at it. So for now, it's definitely in Zola's favor. Zola, not the greatest though, as you enter sector two, it appears. In fact, he's still losing a bit of time. But Kinsey has to back off a bit so that way he doesn't run the risk of running into Zola and having his lap time compromised. So now the gap goes back to about 5 tenths. Zola, a little bit of a hiccup there in the hairpin. But Kinsey has to hiccup even more to avoid hitting him. And that's one of the issues that you will have in those technical sections. Pinkwo comes down to the inside to break the draft away from Herbie, so Herbie will not be able to utilize the draft. Here's the other thing to watch, Ultimate, who has fallen to 8th position now. Oh, wow, Kinsey, I didn't see where this came from, but Zola must have had a major issue there in Sector 2 in the uphill section, because now Kinsey is there. He's going to have, if he doesn't make a mistake in the last corner, Kinsey will have DRS on Zola. As I was going to say, the entrance is going to be watching Ultimate and to a lesser extent Ledger as the softs gradually start falling off and the hards start coming into play here. It's going to get interesting, but it looks like Zola once again had a better run onto the straight. Also, it looks like that tracing point is better set up for the straight line compared to the Red Bull. Uh, it doesn't matter, Retro threw himself right up there to be anyways, trying to compromise Zola's run onto this next straightaway. Retro has a DRS once more, the gap is basically non-existent. He goes to the inside, neck and neck. 
Zola does a great job giving the Red Bull room and then cuts in front of him when you start getting into technical sessions. So it takes off some of the air off of the wing of that Red Bull and now the gap goes back in favor of Zola as they're running downhill here. A little bit farther back, Pinquo is right there behind Herbie, and he's got Ryan Hurricane working on him. Pinquo and Hurricane have every reason in the world to make these overtakes as fast as possible because they're on soft tire compounds, and those tires will burn off faster than Herbie's and Danny. We're on medium compounds around them. Here comes Pinquo. He's got the DRS on Herbie right now, trying to make something happen, but can't do it this time. Herbie takes a wider line, though, going uphill. Extremely wide. Oh, oh, and that was Zola! And Zola, who was second on the racetrack, has now gone around and has significant front wing damage and is plummeting through the field because there's just not very much clean track there. And Pinquo got by Herbie. Well, I say that they're still fighting, and Herbie has the advantage for the moment. It's going to get very interesting. Who's going to get a better run? Going through this corner, right up with Ryan Hurricane. Hurricane has a better run than both of them. He's neck and neck right now with the Haas. The Haas is going to have DRS. The Ferrari is going to have DRS. Where is the Ferrari going to go? He nearly pitches Pinquo. They're briefly three wide. They're going down the straightaway. And it looks like the Renault of Danny might end up being the biggest advantage of them all because he's going to be fighting right now with Herbie. They make a little bit of contact. Herbie goes to the grass. They make contact again. And now look at there goes Danny. He had a great run going there, but the track just ran out and was not able to make it happen in time. And now Danny's going to fall through the field. The good news, though, is that I don't see too much wing damage. Now, there is wing damage. That is definitely going to be sacrificing time, though. That's not going to be good. Zola is in the pit lane now, swapping over to the hard tire compound. Kinsey Retro, 5.4 seconds away from the leader, a little bit twitching that Red Bull. But if something happens to Hazel, he is the driver who is most likely going to benefit from it. Look at this little train of cars right here. Low leather and steel all on top of each other down this back straightaway. The gaps open up just a little bit. It seems like Steel, despite the fact that he doesn't have DRS in the two cars behind him, it looks like he's utilizing the soft and the Mercedes powertrain to stay ahead and actually gap the other two just a little bit in the DRS zone. Steps a little bit wide, compromises his line. Ledger trying to see if he can make something happen to close into the driver ahead. Now Lowe is closing in on Ledger just a bit. And also of note, Steele might be able to catch Ultimate because Ultimate is on the hard tire compounds and is going to just lose time more and more as time goes on. Of note, Steele is close enough to Ultimate that he had DRS on the straight. So this is going to get very interesting here. Because Ultimate is on the hard tire compounds, but Steel is on the mediums and Ledger is on the hards. So we are absolutely now at the point where the soft tire compounds are losing their advantage and the mediums tires now are starting to come into their own. The softs are still moderately competitive, but I think we are at the point now where the, hard, the hard, medium tire compounds are now without a doubt the faster tire compound to be on right now. A little bit of track violation there from Steel, but it doesn't look like he's gained very much from it. A little bit farther up in the field, this is Pinkwo, who is on the soft tire compound. And here's Ryan Hurricane. Ryan Hurricane is actually trying to close in on Kinsey Retro Retro there. in the Red Bull is having a little bit of trouble putting the power down coming onto that back straightaway. Now, he's got great acceleration in the Red Bull, but we've seen that Red Bull skid out and get a little bit sideways there. But he puts the power down and does not seem to be very, very happy when it comes to its setup right now at least when it comes to the suspension setup, and that's leaving him open to attack from drivers around him. However, everyone who's gotten around him thus far has had incidents happen. So because of that, Kenzie, despite struggling with that car, is still in second on the racetrack right now. It's Ryan Hurricane's chance to try and make something happen to the Red Bull right now. He's going to have DRS. Boy, does he have DRS, but is he going to get close enough to make a dive at the end of the straight? not look like it. it looks like Ryan has that Ferrari set up a little bit more for the handling parts of the track rather than the straightaways. Kenzie right over the curbing there. Very, very abrasive run for those first three quarters and that's going to leave him open to a potential late dive bomb from Ryan, but Ryan's going to think better of it, but he does close in massively. Boy, does he close it massively. Kenzie seems to be really, really hesitant pushing that Red Bull around through here right now. A little bit further back though, look at this, Lowe 
is there on the soft tire compounds. They are dying on him. He has stayed in DRS range, though, of Ledger. And Ledger, who's on the hards, is looking out way to try and get by Steel ahead. Right on board with Ledger now. As they come into the hairpin once more, Steel is on the mediums and is trying to make something happen to Ultimate farther up. And Path, something has happened to Mr. Anderson and Path there. They're both in the wagon, but they both had a little bit of a hiccup there going through. Meanwhile, farther back, Ledger and Steel are in the fight. And right now, Steel is ahead of Ledger, but Ledger has the hard tower compound, so this battle might come back in his favor. If he can just stay there, he doesn't want to come back to his favor. He wants to take it now and take it abrasively. But he is so aggressive there, they end up compromising his line. So now Lowe is in a position to overtake Ledger going down the street without DRS assist, but now that McLaren locks up the tires to try and avoid hitting the Mercedes, so now he gives up the time. And now both of these two drivers, the Ferrari and the McLaren, will both have DRS on steel and each other. Oh, now goes up. Here comes Legers. He's going to make the move, and yes, he will make the move. And at the end of the straightaway, a little bit of contact there. That's not going to be good. Lowe will not be happy with that. Steel gets back by Ledger from that. Try to see if there's damage on Ledger's front wing. And there is, there is damage. Oh, that's gonna make even worse damage now. And a pass has happened for a second. Ryan Hurricane has gotten by Kinsey. And he did it in the technical section of the track as well. So we're seeing the Red Bull, despite qualifying relatively well and being as high as second today, the thing is just not very well put together. He's really struggling to get a good run here. He will have DRS though on the Ferrari, so he might, if he's close enough, he might be able to take the spot back, going through this slightly banked corner. That's exactly what he's planning to do. Power down. Ryan Hurricane's trying to see if he can make a cutback work. Not happening now. Kenzie cuts in front. He's gonna take some of the arrow off of the nose of that car. Ryan Hurricane will have another shot on the main straight. He's going to have to draft from Kinsey right now. The Red Bulls Honda engine is very well set up for initial acceleration. But as the straight goes on, it goes in favor of Ryan Hurricane. Around that last corner now. Kinsey has good acceleration, but Ryan Hurricane had a better exit. So it's going to neutralize each other. Ryan Hurricane is going to get by with the help of DRS. And now Kinsey Retro is going to fall to third once more. And Herbie is going to be the driver that he needs to watch because Herbie has... Ooh, Herbie nearly cuts it to the rear tire of Kinsey Retro there. And Ledger is pinning to repair that damage. Danny is coming on the move for Mad Lee. And Danny moved him up into the point play position, but he's going to compromise his line going into the final corner. And that means Mad Lee may have a chance at get this spot back. And yes, he does. Mad Lee will get the spot back at the last minute. Here's the thing, though. He's got DRS. Danny does not. So that means that Mad Lee is going to be a little bit faster on this straightaway. So Mad Lee, for the moment, is able to defend off the virtue of Danny compromising his line. XRL Herbie is going to get very interesting here because he has DRS and the drivers ahead. So he will be the next one to start putting focus on the soft tire compound driver that he's already got by Pinkwo. He's on medium tires, so his tires are in a better position right now than those of Ryan Hurricane and Kinsey Retro ahead of him. Ryan Hurricane gets bullied out of the way by Herbie, and that's going to be what Kinsey wants to see. 
because now Kenta is going to be able to get away from those two cars just a little bit, and he's going to maintain a position in second for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, way farther back in the field, though, this is another interesting little battle to watch. Mr. Anderson, who was involved in since early in the event, was fighting with Zola, who has been in, who went around on his own merit, and Zola was in a position to be second. He's 17th now, but Zola is trying to get ahead of Mr. Anderson for good. Oh, this is going to get really interesting here because Herbie is absolutely going to have DRS on Kinsey Retro here. The, the Honda Power Plant, again, good initial acceleration, but the Mercedes is a very well-rounded in every aspect. He's going to go to the inside and easily overtake using the DRS. Not even going to be remotely an issue, and there's not really anything Kinsey Retro can do at the end of that straightaway. Kinsey's best bet is going to be to try and get a good run through these corners and utilize the DRS again. That's exactly what he's going to do. They're going to be neck and neck once more as they come to the end of the straight. <laughs> Kenzie, that short straightaway is exactly what that Honda Power needed. Oh, but the car twitches out, so they're now side by side going down the hill. One of the fans to let off. Oh, look at that crossover. Kenzie made the mistake and still made the crossover. And is now back in the second position. He's putting out an amazing defense in the car that he does not seem to be very comfortable with right now. And now Ryan Hurricane is in a position where he might be able to make another dive bomb on Herbie, the same way Herbie did on him. Not to mention, Pinkwell was now back in this fight as well. Here we are, Herbie on the inside. Herbie's easily going to clear Kenzie Retro at the end of this small straightaway. But Kenzie Retro's going to try and fight back. He's got a slightly better line. He's keeping clean air on the nose of that Red Bull. Coming uphill, Herbie on the outside. And Kenzie's going to take a little bit shallower entrance for a wider exit, but did not make that line work very well. Hurricane is going to be in a position where he might be able to overtake Kenzie here. And here's the big thing is Hazel is now coming to the pits. Hazel is pitting, more likely going to try and get onto a different compound of tires. But Kenzie Retro and Ryan Hurricane are staying out for a little bit longer. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Pinkwo is pitting as well. Kenzie Retro, this is going to be for the lead. He makes the dive on Herbie. Despite the fact that those soft tires are definitely wearing out, Kenzie does not care. He is fighting and fighting in earnest in what is for now a battle for the lead position. Neck and neck once more between Herbie and Kinsey Retro. Ryan Hurricane is still there, wants to make something happen, but there's just not always enough track there for it to happen. Herbie is trying to put pressure on Kinsey, make Kinsey have another mistake going downhill here so Herbie can get by him, but for now that's not happening. And that's a full course yellow flag as Ollie has had an accident there, and Ollie has had an accident. And that's happened just as after Hazel came out of the pits. So Hazel is the highest driver in the field right now who does not, who is not on old tires. But a bunch of drivers are going to get some good free pit stops from this. The field is now has to gather up properly. As Ollie crashes out, and that will be our first yellow flag of the day here. Alright. Alright, Ollie, go ahead and include your audio. Ollie, uh, what happened there? You were fighting in the back of the field, and all of a sudden we saw you were knocked out. What happened? Uh, when on the front of the way, you can see him as fun. Simple as that. Ran into the wall. Sorry to see that happen. Um, what was your what was your strategy for the day, if I may ask? When you came to tires, I would go for the medium soft All right. Well, that would be an interesting strategy. We'll see if anyone else follows that up. Ollie, I want to say thank you for coming to the booth and sharing what happened to you. Yeah, I might make the problem. That's the word from Ollie, our first DNF of the day as we are under a full course safety car. A lot of drivers going ahead and jumping onto new tires of interest though. The two Mercedes of Steel and Herbie staying out on the worn mediums. And Beastian as well is staying out, but he's on hard tire compounds, so he's on a completely different strategy than most of the rest of the field right now. Beastian, one of the few drivers now 
along with Fabrizio Gore on the same set of tires that they started the race out with. And the answer is in the for Hazel. Um, he is up to third now. He's basically got a free pit stop, but he's now behind Herbie and Seal. He's going to have to figure out a way to get by them nice and quickly so that way he doesn't end up involved in their ins excuse me, involved in their incidents. It's also going to take a long time for the back of the field to properly gather up. But the good news, though, is that Mr. Anderson has already made a stop. He has no intention of stopping again. We may be under yellow flag for a somewhat extended period of time here simply because of the speed, simply because of the way this track is and how many slower speed corners there are. comes Penquo. Penquo was up to roughly fourth position when he pitted just before the yellow flag came out. He is now down in seventh. The interesting one to watch is going to be Ryan Hurricane because Ryan Hurricane is on the soft tire compounds. But everyone else around him is going to be on mediums. If he can get a good restart and make up a lot of positions early, he may be in a very good position, especially when you consider that Herbie and Steele are on worn mediums. They're only going to be good and operational for maybe uh, one or two more handfuls of laps. Hurricane is going to be pushing hard for a while, so it's going to be very, very interesting watching what happens amongst them. Matt G and Ledger had incidents and pitted, and now they're on slightly more worn tires than everyone else, but they're also caught to the back of the field, so in some ways this is an advantage, but in other ways it's going to be a harm for them. Zola qualified right near the front, but spun out on his own. He's been trapped in the back of the field since. He's currently 16th, but he's rushing to try to catch up to the back of the field as quickly as possible, as is MCR Path, Boothy, and then the two Renaults of Danny JJ and Mr. Anderson. Should see Boothy closing up to the back of the field very shortly. And after he does, we anticipate that we will see Half, Zola, and the Renaults of Danny and Mr. Anderson do the same shortly afterwards. Field, and now here comes Danny, and around the final corner is Mr. Anderson. So the entire field has caught up, and hope well, the entire field will have caught up at the end of the straight, and that means that hopefully we will be in a position where we can go green flag at the end of this lap. And there's the word from Race Control safety car will come in this lap, so we will be going green here. Coming on to lap 17, we're gonna ride on board with Hazel. But we're going to focus on Hazel for this because Hazel needs to get by the two Mercedes as fast as possible. He has the freshest tires compared to them. Kinsey has one line pressure. Also, this worked out very well for Kinsey. He's been struggling all day, but now he's back in second. And the drivers he's been fighting are all behind him or on much, much more worn tires ahead of him. So Kinsey is in a position where despite the fact that he's been fighting with them Red Bull all day long, he may still get a good result out of this. Come in the green flag now. What can Hazel do to Steele? Steele is going to go right against Herbie, though, at the end of the straight. That's going to get interesting because Hazel must make something happen. There's three wide for the lead there. Well, only for a briefest moment, so the two Mercedes have compromised their lines. Oh, and there goes Herbie! And Herbie has wrecked the car and spun off the racetrack. Your race leader has just gone around all by himself, and now Hazel only has one Mercedes to focus on. That's the last thing you want to see happen, but for the lead going down the hill here, Hazel looking for any open spot. The entire field's bunched up and steel as now has the top side ledger as a top penalty. This is no good for Herbie. Oh, and Kinsey's going to make just a little bit of contact there with the AlphaTauri. Red Bull versus AlphaTauri going down the street. Oh, this is going to get nuts. Look at all these drivers trying to make something happen. Ultimate on the outside of Hurricane. Neck and neck. And Matt Williams is going to go there. Now Pinkwell and the Haas is going to try and follow. But Ryan Hurricane is going to cut that off as they start going uphill. But Pinkwell had a better job putting the power down. So now Ryan Hurricane is caught on the outside. Pinkwell is on the inside. They come to the run at the end of this corner here. Now once again, it looks like Pinkwell has a spot. Ryan Hurricane is going to make just a little bit of contact. He's on better tires, but his line keeps getting compromised. He's actually losing time because now he's going to lose a position. 
position next row low. Steel has now lost the position to Hazel there in the top position. So the driver who dominated early on now has the lead. And Ryan Hurricane is pitting damage to the car in that little sh shuffle. So that means that now Boothy is the highest driver of everyone who is not on the medium tire compound. Kenzie wants to find a way to get by Steel sooner rather than later so he can have an attempt at holding on to the DRS of Hazel ahead and be in a better position as this race goes on. But right now it's not looking like it's going to happen because Hazel has opened up a massive gap. Oh, look at Kenzie Retro. Huge dive there at the end of the downhill section. He is there now. He is second. But already the gap is more than a second between himself and Hazel. So Kenzie, unless Hazel makes a big mistake here through this corner, which does not look like he did. Oh, no, actually he did because Kenzie actually closed in quite a bit. And now Steele has fallen to the front position behind Paul Smith. And now Pinkwell is going to make the move going down the street. And now it's time for low. Steele is trying to fight back against Pinkwell, but those warm beams are not working out. They've, he's got a better line, though, and that will put him back ahead of the Haas for the moment. But only for that moment. Pinkwell will more than likely utilize DRS to get by Steele here. A little bit farther up, Ultimate. DRS has been enabled, so we're going to see a lot of interest in DRS trades for very shortly here. Pinkwell right there beneath Steel. Here's Low on the inside, though, of Pinkwell. That's going to compromise his ability. In fact, Low is going to try and push the Haas a little bit wide. They both are compromising their lives pretty significantly going through those first three corners. So as DRS opens up, Pinkwell has now lost the position and then retaken it from low. And Steele, this is ideal for him because it means that he'll be able to hold on to that position a little bit longer. Also note, Kinsey Retro is just close enough that if he doesn't lose too much time in this last corner, he'll be able to utilize DRS to stay there with Hazel for a bit. Oh no, and there goes Steele into the inside wall. And the Mercedes day is falling apart. Ledger is now up there in the fight as his game is gone. They right there about to catch low as Penko has now worked his way up to the fourth position now. And Ultimate now is in the position where he can start fighting with Kinsey once more. Ultimate is trying to set himself up as a, as a potential 
competitor against Hazel for race lead. Boothie has DRS on Steel, who has DRS on Mad G. Oh, Boothie's gonna have a big run, a big head of steam, but under pranking, is he gonna go for it? He's not, but Mad G still locks up, so they're right there now, and regardless. Look at this battle, and look at Steel! Steel makes a lot of contact with Zola, and now he's gonna fall into a fight with Path. Zola has recovered from his spin earlier, and is now up there in points paying positions. Trying to see if he can do anything to Boothie, but that McLaren under more and more pressure, so he burns off those softs faster and faster. A little bit farther up in the field, though, Gabus John is there in seventh. He's got DRS on the car ahead. Legend does not have DRS on the guys ahead. Below has DRS on Pinkwo. That's gonna get interesting because Pinkwo is not even close to Kinsey Retro. Kinsey is actually utilizing DRS to stay there. Up, stay up there with Ultimate, and he's hoping that Ultimate can help drag him up to Hazel and make it a menage a trois for the lead. That's the hopes. But the uh, thing with hopes is that hopes don't always come true, even with hard work. Hazel fast slap again, 131.818. The gap has now extended to 2.5 seconds between the two. Kinsey is, might go for it at the end of the straight. In fact, that's exactly what he's going to do. On the inside of the Williams. Oh, that inside line does not always work, though. Going through turn one is really going to compromise his momentum. But he's got a good acceleration coming out of the straight and has DRS. And at the end, he looks for a spot, but ultimately blocks it off from him. A little bit farther back. Looks like most of the battles are kind of going away. Oh, I say that, but now Zola gets right up there with Path. I'm not Path, with Mad G. Mad G's going to hold on to ninth, but Zola is trying to charge his way up to the field. The thing is, Mad G is still just close enough that if he can gain a little bit of time through these corners, he'll get DRS again on Boothie and can use the DRS as a defense against Zola behind him. Not close enough. So this time, this straight, no DRS for Mad G, and that means that Zola has a chance at the end of the straight, a very slightly banked corner. Racing point on the inside, going uphill. It's the same place he nearly spun out earlier. Well, he did spin out. Oh, wow, look at Zola as he goes all the way up, and he spins across the track, and there's nowhere for Path to go. And Path and Zola have a massive accident. That's a safety car. And we caught that here on tape. Zola, that same section, the aerodynamics on that tracing point must not be very well set up. The car stepped wide and kept stepping wide, and he went way off track, spun across, avoided everyone the second time, but while he was still trying to get control of the car, came back across and ran right in the path, and now it's a flurry of drivers coming in to get new tires and try and make something different happen. Pinkwo and XRLO are on hards, as is Mr. Anderson. They're all betting on potentially, well, Mr. Anderson's on those same cards he's been on since the last yellow flag. But Pinkwo and Lowe are betting on maybe not pitting again for the rest of the race. But a very dynamic accident from Zola. And now he's going to fall back out of the points paying position. A very, very rough day for him in that tracing point machine. And Wax just got a penalty for a collision with Danny. That could be the case, because I do see Wheaton damage. That might be a legit problem. Hazel, oh god, this is going to be a while. It's going to be a long time for the field to properly gather up. Just saying. Because Hazel is here... Yes, exited sector two, and the pace car is still in sector one. This is going to be a while. Now, the good news is the field isn't too massively spread out, so we should get under green shortly after it does catch the pace car, but it's going to take a little bit of time. Path now has a drive through penalty for speeding under the safety car, which is interesting because he's... I don't see how he could be speeding into the safety car when the field is just trying to catch up to the back of the field. And Hazel is going to use this as a free pit stop again. And I wonder what he's going to do. He is going to go and jump onto the hard tire compound. I'm 
Boofy now has a penalty for speed in pit lane because Boofy is also coming in the pits. What's his strategy? Same thing. He's going onto the hard, so he now has to serve a drive through penalty. So Ultimate is now going to be your race leader. Okay, but Sean is in the pits. Herbie is in the pits. Oh, and Path has just retired from the session. Path, I believe, was saying that he might not be able to stick around for the rest of the race. One second. Across track and path basically speared right into him and now he is out of the race i'm not sure if he had to leave due to personal real life reasons or if damage on that car may have ended up being more terminal than i figured could be dealt with because he is now out of the event we are now down to a 17 car field what in the world who is that pulled off there I'm guessing that was path who was pulled off the racetrack back there Max on the mediums, mediums trying to rush to catch up to the field. BCN is still on the same set of hards that he started this race on. He's going to probably still try and make that single stop strategy work. If he can keep making these hards last, he'll be able to dump onto mediums and then go. The thing is, with all the safety cars, it keeps bunching up the field. Lane drivers get extra stops in. This may be a race, the first race where the one stop strategy might get defeated simply because of all the yellows early on giving drivers basically a type of free stop. Ideally, we will see Wax catch up to the back of the field this lap. He's ninth, but it's on extremely worn hearts. It's not a bad idea, but with all these yellow flags, uh, I th here's the problem. If you pin it right now, unless you pin it onto hearts, and BSC can't do that because he started on hearts, you need to run a different tire compound at some point. If you pin it onto hearts, you can probably make those hearts last to the end of the race. But if you pin it onto anything other than hearts, I don't think you'd be able to make it to the end. We're still not even halfway through the event. So because of that, I'm just saying here, because of the way the tires are, I don't, this race could still work out for Beastia to some extent, but I don't know if it will work for him against Hazel or Pinko or Low ahead of him, let alone Maggi, who will take up for that spot if Beastia does stop. But everyone else ahead of Beastia will have no choice. They're going to have to pit again to put on different tires, otherwise they're not going to be able to make it to the end of the event. Anyways, Wax is pretty much caught in the back end of the field now, so we anticipate that we will be going in this lap. Once again, we're going to be watching Hazel. There's the word, safety car in this lap. We're going to be watching Hazel, because Hazel is on fresh, hard tires. Everyone else is on moderately worn mediums. Drops from the field just a bit. Hazel is up to third. Kenzie is back up to second. 
second once again. Banquo has lost even more positions of flurry of action. I can't really even keep up with it all right now. Wax has gotten by Hurricane farther back there. to see if he can do anything to Kinsey. Kinsey is trying his heart out to try and keep up with Ultimate so he can fight for the lead. Kinsey, despite having an ill-handling car, is being very well equipped when it comes to driver ability to make something happen. Honestly fighting for a potential win or podium position here. This is going to get interesting. Lowe has been caught by Mr. Anderson. Max and Steele having a little bit of an exchange of positions back there for 11th and 12th. Oh, Pinkwell right there on Mr. Anderson, and Maggie is right there on Pinkwell, and Danny is right there on Mad Clean, and Herbie is there ready to capitalize on some half of the both of them. Mr. Anderson and Pinkwell are fighting, and now Pinkwell goes ahead of Mr. Anderson. Look at this flurry of activity here. Oh, Maggie, what are you doing? He's throwing his car up in areas where I don't think it will work, and now Herbie comes up in there. He wants to make some happen as well. I don't see this working out for them. Oh, good thing they only have DRS, this would make it hell. Mr. Anderson, a huge off there, almost off the racetrack completely. That's going to put him in the threat for Madge and Danny and Herbie as they're running downhill here. Mr. Anderson weaving all over the track, and that's really playing havoc with the aerodynamics of that Haas of Mad D. Mad D and Mr. Anderson still neck and neck. Danny JJ is ready to fight back and make something happen. Nothing yet. Herbie nearly runs to the back of the Renault. Looks to the inside. It's going to be a little bit of contact. No, but Herbie struggles to put the power down properly. Going down the straightaway. Madge is still right there by Mr. Anderson. Danny has put himself by force against Madge. Neck and neck is now go uphill. It's going to be where the arrow comes in the big play. Mr. Anderson cuts off Madge's arrow that comes down and doesn't cut off the arrow of Danny. But Danny's going to go around. And Danny is going to spin all by himself. Going uphill. That's gonna take him out of that little fight. Oh, look at this! This is not Herbie going three wide against Manky and Mr. Anderson. That's not gonna work out too well for somebody. Now it's Wax's turn. Wax is gonna come down the main straight. Wax is the best friend of them all. DRS has been enabled. They're three wide again. They're three wide again. Oh, God, it's gonna be it. Oh, God, it's gonna be that. Mr. Anderson, four wide. Four wide down the straightaway. A four wide overtake. And now Mr. Anderson is gonna get back up there. This has gotten absolutely insane. There's a flurry off track back there. That's right. And Hurricanes are going up no now. Once more. They have old DRS on each other. Mr. Anderson is fighting with Herbie. And now look at Wax. Wax throws it up there at the last minute. Nearly runs Herbie off the racing lines. They're going downhill once more. Someone's got to dow out. And Wax dows out. But now Mad Cans up right, right to the back of him. Excuse me. Herbie is right there on the back of Mr. Anderson as they start going uphill right now, neck and neck. Over a slow crest and down to the tightest corner here. The Mercedes is going to take the wider line. Mr. Anderson is on the inside going down. Herbie has the soft tire compound, so for right now, the battle is going to be in his favor. Zola has caught up in the middle of all this fighting, as has Davis done. So this battle just keeps getting larger and larger as they now start going uphill once more to the exit of Sector 2 and enter Sector 3. <sighs> Holy moly, these guys. Three wide, two straights in a row, four wide at the end of the main straight. That's absolutely insane. Wax trying to make something happen. Mr. Anderson, Herbie is trying to get away from the Renault as fast as possible. Mr. Anderson is going to lose a position to Mad Neck and neck behind Zola against Mad And now Zola is back into the point fame position. This is the second time that he's gotten there. And he makes contact with Mr. Anderson. That's not going to look well. It looks like he just got thrown up there. Regardless of anything, Mad has wind damage now. Zola is looking to make something happen on the cars ahead. He looks to the inside of Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson with a huge dive, and Zola goes around. And that's the third accident of the day for Zola. He jumped it on the inside, and the other driver couldn't see it, cut down on him, and turned up right around. Zola again out of points paying positions. And 
looking at Mr. Anderson and Wax as they're fighting for the eighth and ninth positions. Kirby has gotten away from this battle, and that's something he's going to be very happy about because these guys are slugging it. Something that the other one who's not going to be very happy is Kenzie Retro, who now has the Ferrari of Ledger trying to make something happen on him, but Ledger has significantly more, more tires than Kenzie right now. That good neck, Mr. Anderson on the inside. He pushes that Haas really wide going through these corners. And he has to let up just a little bit so he doesn't get bumped, bumped by the game for being inbound when it comes to his track limits. He's going to have a run, though, when it comes to DRS on the main straight, without a doubt. In fact, not only will he have a run, James Gunn behind him will have a run also if things go right. They all have DRS on Mr. Anderson. What can that Renault do going down the straight? Kenzie Retro, time penalty for track violations. He has lost the position to Ledger now. Mad D on the outside, trying to pitch Anderson to the really, really difficult inside line. But Mr. Anderson made it work. He's going to be a lot faster going down the straight, and he has DRS. So it looks like at the end, the Renault is going to try. Mad D is still there, trying to make something happen, but the car slides a little bit wide. Now James Dawn is there. James Dawn is going to squeeze. Actually, Mad Lee held on to it, so Gabe Gone is going to be there in 11th, and now Ryan Hurricane is coming up into the fight as well. But Ryan Hurricane has more and more tires than Mad Lee and Gabe Gone ahead of them. Also, no, Kenzie Retro is still within DRS range of Ledger if something happens. Oh, and Ultimate! Ultimate has been knocked out of the event! He has spun out on his own and totaled his car just after the rip. Just after. That's the same place we've seen so many other drivers have instances, but the rear suspension is torn up on that car. That's a very, very unique. I've not seen damage quite like that before. And now we're under yellow flag again. Hazel, your leader, once more. As XRL Ultimate knocked out of the event, one of the fastest drivers in the series has just been knocked out when he was trying to run down against Hazel. And the field is back under yellow flag. We're seeing a flurry of action of drivers coming in pit lane. Now, a lot of drivers were on hards earlier, switching over to mediums. Here in the party, here in the party right now, we have XRL Ultimate. Ultimate, make sure your audio is included. Yeah, you were fine. second. Yeah. What happened there? Mate, I was kidding off. I was winning. I was leaving, and then I don't make a mistake all race, and I touch the outside curve in the corner, and I saved it, and it just caught around on me at the last second and flicked me into the wall. And I literally tapped the wall, and it took my tyre off, and then I just thought, oh my god, I can't believe it. I've wasted a podium. Wasted. I can't believe I've just done that. Ultimate, I do want to say this. You were in contention for fastest lap of the race and obviously for the win itself. Uh, who do you think has the race win in the bag now, though, that you've been taking Hazel. out? Hazel's uh, going to fly. He's just going to disappear in a minute. So this race is about to be over because I think it, it was either going to be me. I don't know why Kenzie hasn't fitted. Uh, Kenzie should have fitted. But expect uh, Ectoro Ledger on them fresh mediums to be absolutely flying towards Hazel now. All right. Well, I'm going to say, Ultimate, it's an absolute travesty, absolute shame to see you knocked out there. Say that for a magnificent battle to the end. Shame to see you knocked out here at Bahrain. All right. All right. Well, there's a word for Ultimate. Both of the Williams have now been knocked out of the event. From instance in the same section of the circuit, the Sector 2 and the uphill bits have been playing absolute havoc today. Ultimate says he was in the lead. If so, I apologize for not catching that overtake when it happened. I was focused on a lot of the battles in the back of the field. So I probably should have caught that. The fact that I didn't, I do apologize for that. I try to bring the best coverage possible. Sometimes I get a little bit hyper focused on certain parts of the field. Uh, Mad G is going ahead and jumping into the pits right now. And we anticipate that we'll see him. Is he serving a drive through He's not serving a drive through But he's jumping off of softs and onto mediums. He's going to fall all the way back to the field. Zola also 
is now finally back in the top 10 position. Uh, da uh, Danny is coming to the pits as well. And he's currently on 13 lap more mediums. They're going to put hards on for the rest of the race. And everyone is now on medium or hard tires. Herbie is going to be very interesting because Herbie has hards that will last him to the end of the race. We are now past the race's halfway point. We have roughly 25 laps to go. We know the hards will be reliable at the end of those times. Also, Danny, he put on slightly worn hards as well. So that's going to be a little bit, that's a little bit interesting. Uh, you don't typically see drivers having slightly worn hards laying about, but apparently they did in the Renault camp. Um, a lot of drivers are on meetings. I wonder why Kinsey stayed. I have to mimic what Ultimate said. I do wonder why Kinsey decided to stay out if he feels that track position is truly that important. Has what we know has tires and everything that can bring him to the end of the race now. Who will be slower near the end of the race because those tires will have roughly 32 laps of wear. But he will be able to go to the end of the race. Uh, Ledger is supposedly the driver that we need to watch as he'll fly up through the field on fresh mediums while Wax has 7 lap board mediums and Kinsey has 16 lap board mediums. It's going to take Daniel a little bit of time to catch up to the back of the field here. I mean, not too much, but a little bit. So we won't go green this lap. We anticipate we'll be going green coming out to lap 34, which means we'll be going over 23 laps to go. A uh, race filled with yellow flags, but not a lot of DNFs. The three DNFs we've had have represented the three axes we've seen. Ollie had an accident putting the power down, coming out to that non-DRS string and destroyed his car. Then Zola, who has had three accidents of his own today in the second one, going uphill, the car went wide, wide, and as he tried fighting it, it snapped out of control, cut across the track, and hit path. The damage to Path's car, although he was able to continue initially, the damage with the Sarah Terminal, and he retired. And then Ultimate was fighting with Hazel for the win, and then had an accident in the same spot on the racetrack. The uphill bit ended up destroying the rear axle of his car. He is now out. So, despite being a race full of safety cars, we still have most of our drivers who have started the event on track. So, very interesting race to say at least. Also, we could honestly be looking at a uh, race broadcast that might go longer than three hours if we keep having these yellow flags. I'm not saying it will happen, I'm just saying it is a potential possibility. safety car will come in this lap so we'll be going green on lap 34 this will be a very very interesting run here wash ledger that's the word that we were told by ultimate wash ledger because ledger is the next driver that he's anticipating the fight against hazel here near the front But 
we don't know if the mediums are going to last to the end of the race. That's the big question. Kinsey is there in third position. Davis Dillon, 13th, fighting with Boothy right now. Battles all over the track right now. This is Ryan Irving who's working on Herbie. Herbie trying to regain some of Mercedes on. Both of the Mercedes were in a decent position. One, two at one point. But one of them spun out and lead the other. Just hemorrhage time due to excessively worn tires. Now Herbie is trying to make something happen. Oh, has caught Kinsey. Kinsey, who is not pit. He's on the worst tires in the entire field right now. Ha. <laughs> He's fighting back, a little bit of contact side to side. But for the moment, Lowe is going to hold the spot over Kinsey. And now Wax, who at one point was dead last of everyone on circuit, is now fighting back. And Wax is actually going to walk by Kinsey. So a potential podium that Kinsey had might be dripping away from him. I remember him running excessively more tires. Zola has overtaken Mr. Anderson. So Zola is up tonight. He's gotten up to this point before, before going around in an accident. He's going to hope that he can avoid that again. Mr. Anderson fights back and makes a dive bomb. Zola nearly spins himself out. Now Mad G is right there. He wants to make the positions up. He looks to the outside of Zola. Zola dives on the inside of Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson has nowhere to go. He's bunched in between the Tracy Point and the Haas. And now Mr. Anderson pulls out of the boys' main position. Mad G is going to put his no see the Ferrari's rear wing pop open going down the back straightaway Ledger looking all over but it closes the, the wing back up can't make it happen Ledger has a car it looks like both of the Ferraris we've seen thus far have a car that's very very well set up for the corners and twisty bits but not so well set up for the straight line even when DRS is enabled look at this battle Herbie and Hurricane find it out going downhill here and it looks like Hurricane has gotten the position over Herbie for a moment. Herbie has wing damage. Somewhere that Mercedes has gotten wing damage. That's not going to do good for him. He starts going uphill and Zola spins out again. He saves it. But now he's going to fall. He was up to eighth and now spins out and goes down to ninth. And he seems, it seems like ninth seems to be basically his talent. That talent still is not the way to put it. But ninth seems to be the highest that that car can stay for any period of time before something happened. That's four now we've seen that tracing point go around. If Zola brings home points higher than ninth at the end of this race, I think he should be a contender for driver of the day. Simply because of how many times he has nearly lost it to this race. Pinguo has DRS and wax ahead of him as they're going down the main straightaway. He looks to the inside, neck and neck between two. Ferrari powered machines and Pink will, will take the spot for the moment. But now Wax will have DRS back, I believe. And yes, it's exactly what's going to happen. So Pink will dives to the inside to block off the draft advantage. So it's only DRS. So they're going to be neck and neck going through turn four now. And Ryan Hurricane is right there. Ooh, Pink will made a mistake. So Wax is going to go up to fourth. And Hurricane now finds himself up in the fifth position. Owen Wax! Oh, you can see that car is destroyed there in Sector 2. Completely off the circuit, put the power down, and the driver who was fourth on track <coughs> is now off track and out of the race. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to see a very, very interesting finish to today's race in terms of positions because a lot of fast drivers 
have had accents that have taken them out of good positions. We might see Mr. Anderson and Boothie take home points at the end of the day. Zola is now up to the seventh position as well. Not only is Zola in the seventh position, he's gonna have DRS on Herbie this slap, and Zola has mediums, Herbie has hard, so for right now, the advantage is gonna go to Zola. Excuse me. Kenzie Retro finally made his pit stop. He swapped the sauce. The problem now is that he is buried in the back of the field. We're going to try and see what Wax had to say there. So Zola is now up to six as he has overtaken Herbie at the straight. Hurricane is right there behind low. Ferrari trying to gradually set things up. Hurricane is in. Oh, and Boothie has just knocked out. Boothie has just been knocked out. And Mr. Anderson's been involved in the accident also. And that's a virtual safety car. And now Mr. Anderson's been kicked out of the session as well. So Boothie is out. Mr. Anderson is out. All of a sudden, this race has just gone extremely chaotic. We're under a virtual safety car. But honestly, I'd argue we should be under a full safety car from all the damage we've just seen occur. In the party right now, we have Boothy. Boothy, go ahead and include your audio. What happened there? Uh, Boothy, can you hear me? I don't know if Boothy can hear us. We are back under green now, and Zola is now serving a drag boot penalty. He was up in the top six in points, and now he's, he's going to be dropped through the field again out of the points main position. I know you will. Alright, uh, Boothie, real quickly, what happened there that took you out of the race? Uh, Danny pumped me up the hill. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> interesting. Because <laughs> you went off, and then afterwards, like about another two drivers went off in almost the exact same area, so there wasn't anything wrong with the track there, it was just a racing incident. I have no idea what you would do in the end. Alright, well it's a shame, Boothie, because you were in, in line for a bunch of points here today, and sorry to see you get knocked out like that. <laughs> Alright. Alright, well thanks for jumping into the party with us, and being willing to share what happened from your end. Uh, we've not had any luck getting Mr. Anderson in the party to see what's happened to him, same with Wax. So we're going to kind of assume that they're not able or willing to speak about what's happened. So we're back the way here. Herbie and Mad G find it out for the 6th and 7th positions right now. The Haas is pushed really, really wide and excessively wide, if anything. He's got to fall back in line behind Herbie, but now he has DRS going down the main straightaway. Dives to the inside. And for now, Mad is going to take the point. Goes back into the 6th spot. Lowe has lost his position to Ryan Hurricane. And now we're in a position where Ledger has Hazel. We might, if some if some interesting things happen, we may have a Ferrari 1-2 because Ledger is fighting honestly with Hazel right now. The big thing though is that Ledger has time penalties of six seconds. Le Hazel has none. Ledger needs to pressure Hazel into making penalties so that way Hazel will not win this race on penalty count back. A little bit of touch right there. No major issue. Ledger. DRS opening up as he's trying to put the pressure on Hazel once more. Looks to the inside but doesn't make a move yet. Hazel on moderately worn hards. Ledger slightly, slightly to moderately penalty. You look at more medium tire compounds. You can see Hazel locking up the front tires. Hazel's been the dominant car of the day, but it's not been dominant by any long stretch. He's been fighting with people a lot since the first yellow flag. Danny now has a time penalty for track violation. And Ledger will have DRS on Hazel once more here on 
up the straight, but again, the Ferraris have not been very well set up for straightaway speed. They'll close it just a little bit, but not really enough to make anything happen. Ledger's strength has come from the twisty bits, primarily in Sector 2. A little bit further back, Pinquo and Lowe are in a little bit of a scrap for the 4th and 5th positions. Pinquo has DRS on the McLaren, but for now, the McLaren's going to hold on to his position. Back in the battle for a front, the gap's opened up just a tad between 1st and 2nd. Ledger trying to close it in any way he can. Really putting pressure on Hazel. You can see Hazel locking up the front tires. Corner after corner after corner. Someone just went off there. That was Mad G who just went way off the circus. Lost the position of Pinko and Herbie. Now Mad G falls all the way to seventh. And he's very lucky that didn't turn out to be a massive penalty or an accident. Because now he has Danny there behind him. We'll put DRS on him. Meanwhile, back in the battle for the lead. More lockups. Hazel is locking up the tires time and time and time again. Ledger less than two, right at two tenths behind Hazel. Less than that now. He's got a very, very good position. If he can maintain that gap going through this last corner, he'll have DRS. And this could be his best chance to make a dive at the end of the straight. He loses time again, though, exiting the corner. He's back there within three tenths. Hazel goes down low to break the draft. Ledger is still there, but he's just not doing anything. He's pushing Hazel aggressively, trying to make Hazel make mistakes, lock up those tires, either go off track and lose a bunch of time there, or do chime penalties or something. We don't see him making a whole lot of active moves on track. It's all a mind game right now. Farther back in the field, Danny has caught Madly, and Madly has DRS on Herbie ahead of him as well. So no outright moves there. Going back downhill, Ledger backs off significantly from Hazel. So the gap opens up a little bit more. And Hazel's favor, once again, onto this short back straightaway where you have DRS. And of note, Ryan Hurricane is actually starting to catch these guys. So Ryan Hurricane might be in a really good position because he's just been flying, although he doesn't have the uh, advantage of not have, he doesn't have the advantage of DRS. He is closing on the two leaders as Hazel continues to make lock up after lock up. We see him lock up in that corner alone three laps in a row. Pinko still trying to make something happen to Lowe. The battle between Lowe and Pinko is slightly mirroring the one between Hazel and Ledger. The only difference is here Pinquo is the one, well no, they're basically the same, it's just uh, Lowe has slightly more tires than Hazel, and Ledger is pitting. So now it's, now Ledger has pitted, and whatever tire compound he jumps onto, that will be the tires he will run for the rest of the event, and Ledger is on sauce, he's gonna run sauce to the end of the day. There's 14 laps left in the event, I, that's a risky strategy, but if he can make it work, it would pull, pay big dividends. He's betting on everyone else having to make a stop, I imagine. Herbie and Maggie fighting once more, and Danny is going to have DRS on both of them. And Maggie on the outside is going to take the position, and Danny is now going to put pressure on Herbie once more. Also, I can't tell you, I take a shot every time I've said it in this race. Zola is back in the points paying positions. He is 10th now. Maggie gets a little bit sideways there, and Low is still trying to make something happen to Pinkuo. It's a very interesting decision by Ledger to jump onto the softs at this point in the event. I think you would want to run another two or three laps just so the softs don't drop off at all by the end of the race. He was right there. He's putting DRS on Hazel, and now Maggie has a time penalty. But now it's Hurricane's position. Hurricane is on medium tire compounds. He's still closing the gap on Hazel slowly. So Hurricane might be able to jump in onto soft tire compounds and try to run down on Hazel. The thing is, with Ryan Hurricane, is that if he goes ahead and jumps onto the softs, Hazel might be in a position where he can stay out on the hards for the rest of the event. Ledger has caught Zola now. And without issue, will get by him. Herbie is pitting. Herbie is now coming in. So 
now Kinsey Retro is back into the eighth position. Kinsey's gonna have to pit again as well because he's on sub, but there's no way those saws, which already have seven laps of wear on them, are gonna last another 13 laps. And even if they do, he'll be ungodly slow compared to the rest of the field. Matt Lee still trying to make something happen on Danny. Led here by Zola once more on the straight. Zola trying to fight back, but it's not really working. And Ledger's probably going to start opening a gap on Zola. Going downhill right now. I'm watching this battle between Mad G and Danny JJ. Danny has hards, but those hards will last probably to the end of the race. Mad G is in a much more curious position. Honestly, the gap right now between everybody is such that Hazel might have to worry about Danny if Hazel pits, because Danny will probably make those hards last to the end of the race without too much of an issue. Also, Hurricane is now within DRS rank of your leader. Not this time, but he, at the rate he's closing in, he will be next lap. So he's catching the leader on his own volition. And again, <sighs> As a brain up the as a brain, I'm gonna change the uh, gap from interval to leader. Danny is 13. Who's that? Someone just went off. Is that Herbie? Yeah, Herbie's just had an accident there at the top of the hill, at the end, exit of sector two. He is back underway though, but now he's gonna fall out of the points paying positions. He was on soft tires, I'm guessing, on those cold softs. Had a little bit of an accident, a little bit of a spin, I should say. It looks like there's no damage on the car, but now that Mercedes is back out of the points paying positions. So Hazel opens up, has opened up a bit on Hurricane, so now Hurricane's dropping off. So I've heard, I want, I think this would honestly be the best time to go ahead and dump in for Soft if you want to do so. The thing is, if, it's a big if, but if Hazel comes in and swaps tires, Hurricane inherits the lead and Lo, and uh, Danny might take the top spot. But, if Hurricane comes in for Soft, Hazel can just nurse those tires to the end because he has 6.5 seconds over Pinkwo, and Pinkwo's Mediums are not getting any faster. So I think Hazel has this race won, assuming that he has not burned those tires to a crisp. Because Hurricane is no longer closing on our race lead. Ledger has just set the fastest lap of the session. The thing is, he's 23.2 seconds out of the lead right now. He basically is requiring everyone ahead of him to make another pit stop if he wants to get this win. Now, I don't see everyone ahead of him pitting. Danny, for sure, is basically locking himself into a very good position. Lowe has 22 lap worn hards. And Herbie just set the fastest lap. Danny is 22 lap worn hards and has to make them last another 11 laps. I think he'll be able to make them last. However, he's just going to get slower and slower and slower as this goes on. Hurricane has now close to about 1.1 seconds. Now, less than that on Hazel. He needs to be within a second of Hazel so he can start putting pressure on him. He's right at the second mark now, a little bit less, using the draft going down the straight. So it's getting a little bit better, but Hurricane is more than a second at the end of the DRS zone by the looks of it, so I don't think he's gonna have DRS this lap either. No, he hasn't. No, he does not have it. He does not have DRS. Oh, and Ledger! Ledger has been knocked out of the session now! Now Ledger has been knocked out. Herbie is going to be back in the points paying positions. And Zola is back in the points paying positions as well. Ryan Hurricane is now within DRS range of your race leader. Here we are. Ledger coming into the party. Ledger, go ahead and include your audio. What happened there? Uh, Ledger.
Pleasure, can you hear me? I have no idea if you can hear me properly. He also might be someone who just doesn't have a mic. Um, but, yeah, he's gone already, so we're not going to be able to get a word from him. I think he's someone who doesn't use a mic. But anyways, Ryan Hurricane is now within DRS range of Hazel. The thing is, those mediums are getting gradually more and more worn. Oh, Ledger's back in the party. Ledger, oh. can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, uh, Ledger, go ahead and include your audio. What happened there that took you out of the race? Uh, I did the same thing as earlier. I hit that inside curb on the, uh, on the long right hand there. And, um, it, was, it, was, it was a done job. That's a shame, Ledger, because if everyone ahead pitted, which we're still not sure if everyone's tires are going to make it, if everyone ahead pitted, you were in position to take home Potentially second, if not the race win. Yeah, so obviously I was behind Hazel. I wasn't planning on overtaking Hazel anyway, because I had the time penalties and his uh, straight line speed was a lot quicker than mine. Um, and I, I, I ran into the back of him after the straight, so I got a little bit of wing damage. Um, I was going back to the office anyway, to the media was driving to make it. Um, so it was a bit of a bitter sweet, really, but uh, it's a shame that I uh, didn't finish. Alright, one more question. This goes for both you and your teammate, Ryan Hurricane, who is fighting with Hazel for the race win right now. Is it true what we've noticed that the Ferraris are just not kitted for straight line speed and for right now they're kitted for handling ability? Exactly. Like, as, as, you, as you were seeing, we're, Sector 2 is quite strong for us. Um, we're going down the straight, as you can see now, we just sort of, we're not really getting any time even with DRS um, onto Hazel. So uh, hopefully, Ryan will just force him into a mistake. And uh, be able to get past him, and um, fingers crossed. All right, well, we'll see, Ledger. You definitely put a lot of pressure on Hazel, and I think those cards are worn a lot more than normal, considering how much pressure you put on him and how many lockups. Oh. And Lowe has just knocked himself out of the session as well. Lowe has had an accident in the same place that Ledger has, but he's gone way wide off the circuit, and that's another virtual safety car. Late in the event, this race has gone extremely chaotic. We're going to try and get low into the party to see if he can say what happened to him. But all of a sudden, this race has just taken on a very, very chaotic uh, direction here. I'll, uh, I'll see you later, mate. Thank you. All right. Have a good time, Ledger. Sorry about your race. Thank you, mate. We're going to try and talk to Low here as we are under a virtual safety car once more. I'm gonna try and invite Lowe one more time. Back in the fight for the lead. This is the most active fight on track as well. Ryan Hurricane, he's right in the DRS range of Hazel, but we heard it from Ledger. Even with DRS, the Ferraris are so kitted out for handling right now that they're not able to make anything happen. Hurricane needs to make something, make Hazel make a mistake. Otherwise, this race is not going to go in his favor. The mediums are going away from him, but at the same time, Hazel's hearts are going away from him as well. The gap is about five tenths. Now it drops a little bit less than that. But this is the section where Hazel is, in the, is the shortest here on the straightaways. Another lockup from Hazel, and the Alpha Tari keeps having lockups on the front end. That's going to just put more and more wear on those front tires. Hurricane has DRS. He's actually closed just a little bit on the straight this time. Not enough to make a move, but he's there. He's still putting pressure on Hazel. But Hazel has a better exit through the sector. Now Hurricane has DRS on the straight and will bring him back into about a third of a second, if not a little less. But right now, it's basically a stalking battle. Hurricane just basically needs Hazel to make a mistake, and Hazel just needs to not max up. We've had no luck gaining in contact with Lowe after whatever has happened to him, but we are now down to only 11 drivers on the racetrack now. Kinsey has paid for new tires. Zola's paid for new tires. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the thing is still, Danny is 13.8 seconds out. If, and I don't think they'll do it now at this point because it, we're so late in the event, but if the top four, if the top three have to pit, Danny will take home this race win.
Now Ryan Hurricane's having his own little issues with locking up the front tires. So right now the Balfour lead has kind of stalled out. They've caught each other. Hurricane's caught Hazel, but he can't do anything to Hazel because the Alpha Tour is so much faster in a straight line that even with DRS, it's just keeping the Ferrari there and not really giving him a chance to make an overtake. He'll get within about a third of a second at the end of the straights, but can't do anything after that point. Very, very smooth run in the braking zone for both cars, and this time Hurricane has slightly better run. He turns one, two, and three. He's got a DRS as well. This could be it. He's there. He's within about two tenths, but not close enough. He thought of it, but he's not close enough to make it happen. He has to back off significantly from Hazel in turn four. Kinsey Retro has just set the fastest lap of the day, 128.638. The softs are really going to pay good dividends for him being able to do that. Hazel has been the dominant driver of the day, but ever since the first yellow flag came, that's not been an uncontested dominance. Drivers have been fighting him and stalking him most of the day, but a lot of the time it's been other people taking themselves out or being caught either by pit, poor pit strategy or by virtue of having an accident. So Hazel has led a significant chunk of this race, but he's been playing defense for a lot. He's definitely been experienced today when it comes to great defense. The gap between Hazel and Hurricane actually seems to be very, very slowly increasing in Hazel's favor. Again, the Ferrari has the DRS on the straight. Well, this is the closest he's been. Within a third of a second at the end of that first corner. Zola, another time penalty. A yellow flag. Zola has had another accident. He's back underway. But it just goes from bad to worse for Zola. The good news for Zola, though, is that he's 22 seconds ahead. So he's not going to just idly spin himself out of the points main position. Now he'll have to pretty much wreck himself out of the points main positions at this point in the event. Hazel trying to get redemption for a win that was stolen from him partially by the game at Azerbaijan. Ryan Hurricane trying to make something happen in the Ferrari. Ooh, Hazel had a little bit of problem getting onto the straight there. And Hurricane has DRS and a good run. The tires are going away on both of these cars right now. But here's the thing, the tires are going away on everyone who's not Kenzie, Herbie, or Zola at this point. And those three drivers are all so far out, they're not going to factor into it. That's the closest Hurricane has been all day long coming in through that corner. So now the situation has shifted. Hazel was extending the gap. Now the gap is shrinking again more and more in Hurricane's favor. He's within a quarter of a second going through the final corner. If he has the ERS, enough ERS in the straight and the DRS, he might be able to utilize both and make a dive bomb over Hazel. This might be it. He's got it. He's within two tenths, but he's not making the move yet. He breaks extremely early to make sure he does not hit the Alpha Tari. He's still there. He's within two tenths. Hazel actually has to actively defend. The Ferrari is looking for room, but there's nowhere for him to go. This is the most active battle on the track. Davis Town and BC had maybe having a battle shortly for a points, the last points main position. But right now, this is the one with the most interest. Ooh, Hazel, bad luck up there. Here we are, 
Star Hurricane side by side with Hazel, if only just for briefest of moments. Now Hazel opens up the gap once more on the straight. Hurricane uses ERS DRS combo to close back in. The thing is, ERS is not an unlimited thing. There's only so much of it, and, and Hurricane is going to potentially run out. Hazel has a little bit more ERS than Hurricane does, by the looks of it. every straightaway he can. And that's helping him stay within DRS and fighting range. Oh, and Penquo! He was running third, and now Penquo has just been involved in an accident all on his own. And that's a safety car! That's a full course safety car! Oh, God, and that's a full course safety car on lap 54! The race may be over! The race might be over. The race may be over. The field will catch the safety car on lap 55. I don't see any way we're going green on lap 56. And I don't think we'll go green on lap 57. That might be it. The race might be over. We do not know yet. We're going to try and get in contact with Penko. See what happened to him. Danny is now, oh, this is going to get nuts. Hurricane has jumped into the pits because he had enough of a gap. He's betting that Danny's not pinning. Is Danny, no, Danny is staying out. So now Hurricane's going to lose his shot for the win. He's going to fall to third. If we go green, he's lost his shot for the win. He's falling to third now. Steel is going to move up because Mad G is pinning. this race is over. I don't think we're going to go green again. I see no way that we're going to go green flag again here. There's only 10 cars left on the track as well, so every car here is going, every driver here is going to take uh, a point. Javis John is now trapped behind Hazel, so that will help uh, Hazel a bit if Javis John ends up staying there in second, because that means he'll be right interference and protecting that position. And here's the other thing, Danny has time penalties, Hazel does not. He only has three seconds worth of time penalties, but he still has time penalties, while Hazel does not. Yeah, I see no way, there is no way we're going to get this race going again. This, this race is, I think this race is going to win yellow. Stick around, because we might still see green on what will be the last lap. No, safety car in this lap. So we're gonna have a two lap shootout here. Oh, and there's damage on the Renault car. Javis, John, and Danny have just had an accident and there's damage on the Renault's front wing now. And neither Javis, John, or Danny are moving out of the way. So I don't see any way that Hurricane's gonna have a serious attempt at doing anything to Hazel. There's only gonna be two laps. Oh, this is gonna be bad. And we also don't know if they're going to re-enable DRS or not when we come to the green flag. So we are going to go green. It's gonna get, this is going to get nutty because Hurricane needs to get by Danny and get by as fast as possible. Hurricane opens up the DRS behind them. Steel and Kinsey Retro are in a fight. Kinsey might still have a potential podium in the works here. But here we are, Hazel is already running away. Hurricane trying to get by the Renault as fast as possible. He's side by side with him. He's around. The gap between first and second is 1.4 seconds, but the leader, Hazel, has very, very worn hard. Ryan Hurricane is on the freshest sauce that money can buy right now. Danny and Steel are now fighting. Kenzie Retro is there also. This is another accident potentially waiting to happen. There's still damage on the Renault with Danny as well. He is on hards that are significantly worn as well. The gap is down to 1.1 seconds between Hurricane and Hazel. Hurricane.
Ricky needs to get within DRS range. He's in less than a second. This is going to be a mad charge. It will be a mad charge if Hurricane can make it happen. I don't think he was within DRS range, though, at the detection zone. No, he was not. But he's still closing and closing at rapid rate. He's going to have one single lap to go at. Mad D is making it three wide there for the third position. They're neck and neck. And Kenzie is back in the podium positions where we thought he was knocked out of. Hurricane is there. This is it. This is the last lap. He's got the freshest tires in the field. Hazel has some of the worst ones. Where is Hurricane going to make the move? Both of these drivers are going to be very abusive on DRS and DRS coming onto this short back straightaway. The advantage is Hazel. He got a better run putting the power down. Three, a third of a second. Now a little less than that. Going uphill for the last time for the win. Hazel needs to do the defense of his life here. Hurricane very aggressive on DRS and ERS. Trying to do everything he can. He's going to have to shoot it to the inside of Hazel. In this final corner, there's no other chance. And he's around! And the Ferrari goes around, and that means Hazel is gonna win! Hazel is gonna win the race, and Kinsey Retro is gonna come home second! Mackey is gonna come home third! Denny is gonna come home in the fourth position! Seal is gonna come home fifth! And Ryan Hurricane is gonna be sixth, extra, but with no penalties, he'll come back up to fourth. Herbie will be seventh, Zola eighth, Beastie in ninth, and Davis Cohen on tenth. And Hazel gets redemption for what happened to Azerbaijan in one of the most spirited defense focused race ever. Congratulations. And he will take home, I believe, maximum points today. Well, I don't know if he got, I don't think he got fastest lap of the race, but absolutely outstanding job on Hazel's part. We're going to try and talk to Hazel. But your race winner in the Alpha Tari, it is Hazel. Congratulations to him as well. Oh, outstanding. Also, one more thing I want to check. Yeah, everyone made at least two stops. Go figure. <laughs> but Hazel is your race winner in a stunning performance all day long. Alright, here we are, in the party, go ahead and include your audio, Hazel, redemption from Azerbaijan, you have won here at Bahrain, what do you have to say? Uh, Hazel, can you hear me? Why don't you can hear me first? Hazel, I have no idea if you can hear me, if you can hear me, go ahead and give me a sign, but anyways, there's your, uh, post race celebrations. Also, Kinsey Retro, I do want to go ahead and see if I can say, if I can get an invite to him as well to hear what he has to say. Alright, Hazel's left. Hopefully he'll be able to come back in. Kinsey Retro has joined the party. Uh, Kinsey and Hazel. One second. No, Hazel just left. Hazel, can you hear me? Alright, Hazel. Redemption from Azerbaijan. Kinsey, please stick around. Uh, Hazel, redemption from Azerbaijan. You've won here at Bahrain. What do you have to say? Uh, Hazel, redemption from Azerbaijan. You've won here at Bahrain. What do you have to say? Yeah, he spun out all on his own in the last corner on the last lap.
Well, either way, outstanding job on your end, bringing home the victory from the pole. I do have to ask, what went through your head when that last safety car came out? <laughs> All right, well, congratulations on your end, Hazel. Also, real quickly, I want to talk to you, Kinsey. Go ahead and include your audio. In the podium positions for basically the entire first half of this race, bad tire strategy saw you drop all the way back out of the points paying position. How the heck did you get back in the second at the end? That safety car was exactly what I needed. Oh, I mean... I'm, I'm a flood of emotions right now. My hands are shaking. Adrenaline burnout. And... And then, and then uh, earlier tonight, just hearing the news of um, one of the many people that I idolised uh, growing up, uh, Murray Walker, hearing the news that he had passed away. Before before qualifying started, I was I was struggling to hold the tears back. I'm just going to say this right now: that podium is dedicated to him. He is now in the great racetrack commentary box in the sky. That was for you, Murray. All right, there's the word right there from Kenzie and from Hazel. Unless either of you two have anything else you want to say at the end of a chaotic and crazy race here at Bahrain. Uh, well, no, <laughs> nothing else from Hazel. As he's going to go ahead and uh, bounce. Uh, well, we're 168 minutes into this broadcast here, so not quite three hours. But uh, tomorrow, I do want to go ahead and plug you real quickly, Kenzie. Tomorrow... 5 p.m. UK time, you'll be covering X1 here at Bahrain. You know it. And then at the same time on the Ultra Channel, I'll be covering X3. And then at 8 p.m. tomorrow, again, UK time for all these times listed, uh, will be the X2 event. So events and racing from Bahrain isn't over yet. But uh, if what happened, excuse me, if what happened today is any indication of what we'll see tomorrow, we could see uh, a lot of interesting things going up to the stewards post race <laughs> yeah and all, all i can all i can say regarding uh, tonight as i often say on commentary thank you very much i'll have a bit of that all right well that's gonna be it for us here in the commentary box i've been insane leader 13 bring the full realistic race length broadcast from the xrrl league We'll see you guys in a week's time, again on Saturday at 8 p.m. UK time. And I look forward to being there, but tomorrow I'm going to be looking forward to this even more because it's closer. X3 here at Bahrain is a very, very interesting, although early season right now. So stick around for that. We'll be looking forward to seeing you then.